And let me double check that I don't have to. I don't think I have to. Hold on, I'm going to be quiet and see if this goes through. All right. What's up, everybody? Ooh. Hello. It's, uh, it's, you all know me, TJ. And tonight, I'm going to be talking with Chris, who has got a, a lot of fun stories and uh, some political ambitions uh, that we're going to discuss. Uh, a lot of juicy stuff, apparently. So I'm, I am very intrigued. I got some light details on some of this stuff. Uh, Chris, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you get right to it and get started. And, uh, yeah. I'll, of course I'll, I'm sure I'll have plenty of questions. So don't mind me if I jump in. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for actually uh, taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. I've been watching you somewhere between 2007, 2009. I think that's accurate. That's a long time to be listening to my ass. I, I think that, uh, if we, if we have conversations like in the future, I, we, we get into a lot more like detail or back and forth or whatever. But, uh, for right now, you're just like, like, you know, laying it out. And I'm more than, I, yeah, I'm very, very interested to hear more. Before we forget, I want to mention that, uh, that you've also got that little, uh, GoFundMe set up that if people want to check out, we'll, I'm sure a link will be provided in the description wherever you end up, uh, uploading this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get the, uh, yeah. I put that on the GoFundMe. I, I have yet to put the link, but there, I, there's some stuff I want to clip out and everything. So I need to get the URLs you, all straight out. You can everything. edit to your heart's content. I need to cover a little backstory. What we're mainly going to talk about is, uh, what I refer to as the darker times, but I'm just coming out of, the dark times and this was a time my father had passed away a few years prior i didn't i really didn't know that actually my father was the only one that helped me with anything in my life and then after he died you know you, you don't realize what you have until you lose it right and it was a really dark time I, I, we could get into it some other day or whatever some other interview with someone else or whatever but i'm just trying to uh, sum it up i was kind of isolated for many years I think I had a phone for a little while, but at the end, I didn't have a phone, no TV. I say no internet, but I, that, that was the only thing like I was barely able to get. There was one open Wi-Fi signal where I lived, but it was like barely within range. And sometimes the weather would mess it up. Um, so it was really frustrating. Sometimes I would spend, I had it hooked up to a tripod. I would rotate it and, 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 um, you know, adjust it slowly, meticulously doing shit for like hours just to get online. I had no company. Um, I was left in this townhouse with a bunch of cats. My mom was like, well, I gave you an opportunity. And it's like, she just like lived at her boyfriend's place the entire time. She made it seem like, like she was helping me out, but she needed me there too, because she couldn't be making these hour long trips one way. She can't, she can't be driving in her Lincoln town car of V8 you know, back and forth all the time. So it was helpful to have me there to take care of the cats. Someone's got to scoop the litter out of the shit and everything. So I'd see her like once a week. I'd meet up with her. During these uh, hellish eight years or so, I uh, I gained like 30 pounds. So I was like at 207. Now I'm at like 191. So I, it's kind of, I actually see a little bit of difference now. So uh, yeah, I'm trying to lose weight and trying to rebuild my life. And that's actually what I was doing. But yeah, I'm trying to do like, I just recently actually reason why I'm talking to you. I recently took some acid. I found like four hits acid. It wasn't like what I remember when I was younger, but so that I didn't like trip to the point where like someone says hello to me and I start busting out laughing. Yeah. But it made me feel good. And I've been, I've been through a lot of shit. So I, I hear it helps out with PTSD and depression and all that and i think there's merit to that although i i fell off of my antidepressant for a few months and i just got back on that so it's a combination of the two sure but i i think the acid was really really helpful it kind of my mind was on this negative loop i mean there's homelessness there's being sent to jail for 10 months after being attacked there's losing all my shit lots of depression lots of mental paralysis lots of um trap houses it's like i moved from one trap house to another to another had a heart attack fucking dealt with more abusive people in abusive relationships uh, one of them was a lesbian couple and it's like every time i do any sort of intervention it just strengthens their relationship more 
you know, like, why do I want to keep on doing with that? And that's why I mentioned that, you know, so God bless, right? God bless America. Um, I almost seemed, felt like paralyzed almost, like I couldn't do anything. And the acid definitely, um, I, like every five, four or five days, I'll take one, you know, so it was like two and a half weeks or maybe three or something. And uh, it has longer lasting effects, though. So what I'm pretty much saying here, definitely do not send me any acid instead of a t-shirt. Huh. Um, yeah. Uh, that wouldn't, that would not be cool. All right. Um, but- sure. Sure. No, I, I get you. It's funny you actually said that because I have like two old ass hits laying around here somewhere that I'm like, I'm like, I need when? it for my mental health. I'm, I'm still looking for some. I think a dozen, I was thinking a dozen or two oh, within yeah. a few months or something might, might help change me. But the few that I've gotten my hands on so far, and it was like a request I put in two years ago that just randomly showed up to my place like a month and a half ago. Like, yeah, yeah. So it just kind of fell on me and, uh, I definitely, uh, took that opportunity to yeah, that's a crazy, try to better myself. Crazy long wait time. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, I don't really you, know It's many like people. you go out for dinner and they're like, come back next month. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, yeah, we've got you on the list. Like, oh, yeah. How long is the wait? Oh, it's about 38 days. What the <laughs> yeah. fuck? Jesus. Now, uh, you should look into shrooms. I, well, see, the last time I took shrooms was like, I was homeless. I was living in a vehicle on the side of the road and it was a horrible experience. Um, like, and the previous time I took them, it wasn't horrible. All it did was make me itchy. Now, it might have had a slight effect because I didn't notice that I was itching all over the place like a crackhead. But uh, apparently I was. I had a friend in, in the in passenger seat, and he's like, hey, Chris, you're, you're like itching a lot. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, oh, shit, I am itching a lot. <laughs> you know, like, you know, so I think it had a slight effect, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the happy right. kind of chill watch whatever walk around you know kind of experience my buddies and i used to straight up go out to fucking cow patties and like like it was it was not easy you had to find like the right spots and we had one we it was a fucking state park but when you went, went on the nature trail if you like diverted off the nature trail there was like another kind of trail and then from there you had to divert again go through a couple of barbed wire fences and then like the over hang for oh the brush was was terrible you had to get through all that shit but there's just cow shit everywhere and mushroom yeah. mushrooms growing fucking everywhere and it was just nice just the the you know flick and pick flick and pick flick and pick and come home with like big bags full of these fucking things and we would make we would clean them and then make shroom tea oh that and sounds nice it was well it was terrible and stank and you had to like and then you strain you basically boiled them then strained them and then mixed it with something like very sweet like apple cider or something to get rid oh, of the bitterness you just you just pitched the dough no no, no, you know? <laughs> no that shit was gross but we made it so potent that you would take it by the fucking ounce by the shot it, you know you do a shot and then if in 40 minutes you wanted another one you could have one but most people one was enough and I'm talking about seeing crazy shit, seeing like alligators in the green carpet, seeing skeletons in the fucking, in the brick wall, like all weird, weird, crazy visual, like really mind kind of altering, uh, psychedelics. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was expecting. But you know, I, I did one accidentally in school too, because like, that's when I could <laughs> find the good stuff. Like, yeah, <laughs> dude, it was, I like ran away from school. Like I was so messed up that when I was walking through the hallways, there was like some other students that knew and they like, they were able to like push me on the ground by pressing on my shoulder, you know, like, like, and I didn't know why I was falling over, but you, but you were, but yeah. I was, but yeah, it was like, that's the fun part of it, but there's a longer effect. And I really wish I actually had that fun part, but, um, when I took it recently, but it wasn't, it wasn't as intense as I wanted it to be. Maybe I should have taken all four of them at once, oh, but wow. I, you'd, you'd you know, probably it was those. really mild. It was really mild because n- normally like the, the acid that I'm used to, at least my, it's been like a decade and a half, right? You know, like back in the day when it was good and I would get mushrooms and they would actually mess me up and I would get acid and I would trip my balls off. But this stuff that I got, it was almost like they cut it or it was really weak sauce, but it still had a positive effect. And essentially that's what I was doing. Like during this time I was uh, living with my grandmother. I, I had a job. I was, you know, doing free sample shit in the grocery stores. I'd make up my own talking points a lot. I was really charming and, you know, uh, chris- charismatic. Uh, is that how you say that? I Charismatic, have a speech, yeah. yeah, I have a speech impediment. You're good, um, man. Um, and typically it was a good product, so I just go on that. There was all these other new age products like vitamin water bullshit. 
Like, yeah, yeah you look, if you want to make your urine darker, you know, try this water here, you know, like, is it just like going to, you're not going to absorb any of it. I mean, maybe just like a little bit, but a negligible amount. You just might as well eat some food and take a fucking vitamin instead of trying to do it with your fucking water. Anyway, there's some products I didn't like. But I was always like, the old couples would come in the store and everything. And I'm like, how you kiddos doing? You know, you staying out of trouble, right? You know, and, and then, you know, then the, 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 they smile and laugh and get in a good conversation. And I just be nice. You know, like, it wasn't that hard. You know, and I just like, you know, the, these are the best pancakes this side of the Mississippi or whatever I was doing, you know, and I just, I talk like that, you know, to, I'm like, look, you know, if you like the taste of the product, why not give it a shot if you could afford it, you know, and. I was always kind of just straight with people. Um, so I just, I just like shoot it to people straight and they like that. And that's how I made my sales and shit. And I typically sold them out. Like I was always the guy like, yo, shit, someone called off or, or they're saying they're co showing up to the store, but they're, they're just reporting their hours, but they're not actually showing up to the store, you know, so they'll get fired and then I'll have to pick up their slack. You know, they're like, Hey, uh, I usually worked uh, just part time, like Thursday through Sunday. My boss would throw me jobs on for like Monday and Tuesday. He's like, "Hey, yeah, do you want a little extra money? Because uh, you know someone didn't show up. You know, they got fired this weekend, and uh, we need someone to do this demo." And I was like, "Cool," you know, and I did it. And um, anyway, this was during the 2008 collapse. We, when my dad died, we lost the house that we grew up in. And I had, I had really mentioned to my mother to get like an apartment, don't commit to anything. She had committed though, being the greedy, selfish person that she is. And we'll get into that. She want, she committed to buying a townhouse before we even sold the house that we grew up in. So she didn't, you know, and then the, and then the shit like tanked. So we didn't get what we wanted for the house. And then, but she already committed to this other thing. Her her boyfriend is a real, uh, a failed real estate loser, some douchebag that actually still to this day is harassing me, and we'll get into that stuff later. That townhouse eventually gets lost. I have some interesting stories to tell because the bank was like working with my mother, but they, 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 like I was uh, such a hermit, like and and like trapped in that house it was kind of like being in jail but not in jail like it's like you couldn't do anything i eventually found a job though but it was hard finding work like it was a really horrible horrible time and but uh, th there was one time where the bankers were like trying to drill out the fucking uh um thing because they didn't think anybody lived there you know and so i wake up to this weird noise and i'm like what the fuck are you guys doing and they're like oh uh, 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 uh. you know and it's like i thought you guys were working with my mom you know like i thought there was these programs obama did that to help out um so i'm coming out of that we lose that place eventually i move in with my grandmother so i'm living with grandma and it's me and her at this uh condo and so i've been taking care of her for a few years and one thing that i came to realize when i first moved in with her was that i would only talk to her like back when i lived at the townhouse like when i needed some money you know and um i never really contacted her unless i needed some help and so I didn't really realize that until I moved in because that's what my family was doing with her when I was living with her. Upon losing the townhouse, my mother wanted um, my grandmother, her mother, to pay for these two oversized indoor storage units. So so my family was like, look, it's just going to be temporary. But as the years went on, I got more and more frustrated about my family, you know, not doing anything about it. There's stuff that's breaking around the condo. You know, my grandmother has a weird, she was raised Catholic. She has like a weird suffering mentality. Like, like look, it's okay. We don't need to replace or fix anything around the house. We'll just give all our money, you know, to to everyone else. So there was this feud kind of developing between my family and me crawling up my family's butt. And I was really nice about it for a really, really long time. But then I did a different tactic. I tried something else and I started getting bitchy about it. And, you know, this is, it was like $350 a month for years. And then like every year they increase it like eight or $10 or some shit. So by the end, it was like 380. I actually had receipts, but my family had, had gotten rid of it. I should have died documented that stuff. And so I, I don't know, I'm kind of struggling. I, I, I kind of suck at making money, you know, to be quite honest. You know, I don't think that makes me worthless, though, because there's that capitalist like, oh, well, if you can't make money, you know, um, I am a hard worker. I've been one of those guys that's always like called upon whenever there's like a store employee that calls off. You're like, oh, shit, call Chris. You know, <laughs> I did that at Papa John's. Like I did, I, I did that for other stores, too, for years, like back in 
the late 90s, I, uh, I, I was given a $250 uh, gas gift card uh, for being such a badass employee because like whenever there was a store employee that just called off at any store, I would go there and I would be on it. But all that hard work is really, you know, shit. There's a lot of times where people work really hard and they can't afford a roof over that, their head and that's some bullshit. And that's happening too much in America now. And I feel their pain. So I was living with my grandmother, make fun of that or not, you know, like, look, look I have a rough time. It was okay with my grandmother. Like, you know, she was taking care of her grandson, you know, like, um, you know, so that's like kind of family uh, business. Living with my grandmother is a little depressing. You know, she she was watching HLN, fucking Nancy Grace scaring the shit out of her all the time. You know, so my so my grandmother is always afraid. She would make comments like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm scared to go outside at night because I might get raped. You know, and it's like, grandma, like, like, I love you and everything, grandma. But like, I never said it, but I definitely thought it, you know, it's like, grandma, you're, you're, you're not really that good looking. All right. No one's looking to rape. You could go outside. You could do things. She was a really kind of scared person. And probably because my grandfather was a racist asshole and you know, that got drunk and, you know, he, he, he killed Nazis too. So it's kind of a mixed bag. All right. You know, <laughs> But yeah, so he, he abused my grandmother and my, you, you know, misogyny is like a disdain towards women. You know, I think she felt like that, but, um, but she had a disdain for men, you it's know, this misandry, misandry. Yeah. There, th thank you so much. I, um, have ADHD or maybe yes or no, or that's something I had when I was a kid, but I don't have it. I don't know. But uh, I was taking Ritalin at the time. I was on that for a few years. I got on an antidepressant. I actually met this awesome chick. Um, so I'm starting to fix my life. Uh, oh, wait. wait, wait. Uh, also, during the dark times, you know what? I, I was raised Catholic myself, too. And I don't, I don't know what it was. I screwed it up with a lot of women. I mean, there was like women that like threw themselves at me. I was a dumbass. I didn't act when I should have acted. And then there was the times I screwed shit up. So yeah, well, you know, um, I can't say that I like, like, like I've always behaved well. Um, you know, there's times in my life where I've been out of control. I'm not too proud of that stuff. When I act out, it's usually like me making something up clearly, you know, being, being a dick intentionally. And I could admit to shit like that. But see, yeah. <laughs> and I know I'm a little odd and I am not a perfect person. I am imperfect. And I could admit to these mistakes and it doesn't make me a hero. Like it's like I do these decent things like with women, like when they can't give me consent, not because I'm some fucking hero because, uh, you know, it's just the right thing to do. Like, apparently I lived my life wrong. You know, I even, I even like broke up with my ex that I still loved so I could fuck someone else, but I should have just cheated on her. Apparently there's like crazy statistics, like, you know, like 90% chance you would have forgiven me anyway, had I done that. But I didn't know about open relationships at the time. And some chick like broke my brain apparently uh, when she told me about that. And I'm like, whoa, but the extent of my transgressions again you know it's not like i'm going around and i'm punching people's faces in you know and i'm doing all this really horrible shit i i, I fucked a company over <clears throat> you know um after being <laughs> fucked by them <laughs> you know and that was like the only time in my life like i have times where i've gotten screwed um but i wanted to make sure to mention that because i was like look you know if the opportunity ever comes across me again i am going to fucking not screw it up i'm making shit money at this job that i'm I'm working, starting to, I, I've been taking Ritalin for a while. I uh, just got on an antidepressant. I met the woman of my dreams. I had quit smoking. I was, uh, did I mention if I was working out or not? Because I was starting to get out a little, a little out of shape then too. So I'm having this feud with my family though. There's stuff that needs, like I'm helping my grandmother out. I'm living with her and everything, but I'm like moving furniture for her. She wants to clean. She And, and I think that's good for her, for her to like move around and everything. She complains a lot about arthritis and I don't want her to just like, look, sit there. So, like, I, I'd be helping her out, definitely moving furniture when she wants to clean. And I totally understand that because when someone wants to clean my dishes, I'm like, no, 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 I, I'll do it because I want to make sure that it's done properly. Yeah. I have I have a, a, a mentally handicapped friend that doesn't always do the best jobs. And she, she she's a really sweet person. She, she's also hopelessly addicted to meth, too. <sighs> and, yeah, I know. And, and it's really kind of sad. I feel really bad for her. In fact, if, if I... 
And I'll put my money where my mouth is. Like, I'll help her out first. Like, if I ever get support and people want to support me online, I want to help this homeless chick out. Her mental issues prevents her from getting on Social Security, you know. And actually, this was something that I did. I had applied, I think, in February of 2012. And so I'm trying to fix my life, paying attention a lot to politics. Uh, politics has been my thing. So it's kind of taken me a while to figure out what I want to do with my life. Um, you know, some of us are kind of late bloomers, but I've always found politics kind of fascinating. But I mean, they could be better. They, and it's sad that better people are not elected. I aced the Constitution test in fucking high school, although I probably can't do that right now. Give me two weeks with someone. I had my sister help me out for uh, a couple weeks studying but I ace that shit. But most people can't even tell you what the third amendment is. So you're doing better than most. That's for sure. Well, uh, man, well, I mean, I know the fourth one is with the quartering of troops, right? But the fifth man, is, I, I'm the fifth is obviously incriminating see, yourself. Like I look, <laughs> no, they... no, I don't look, I'm, I'm kind of rusty. I probably should have actually prepared and, and read some shit, but look, I'm, I could, I could you, I, you I, don't call yourself like a strict constitutionalist, like as, as your, Go to political like motto, like a lot of other people that have no, oh, no. clue. Well, you know? see, that's the thing is like the constitution could change. I want to build our fucking world. All these people are like, with the dead men said fucking few hundred years ago, you know, we should, they're, yeah, they're dead. They fucking built their world. They, they lived in it. And it's time for us to do the fucking same. A lot of these constitutional arguments, you know, like we could build a, a new, like, I think we should have a new bill of rights. People, deserve to have their own space, you know, addressing homelessness. And um, I actually, back then in, in 2012, 2013, I probably had a list of shit, but I, I, I lost all this stuff. I, d I don't know when exactly I came up with the idea for running for president, but it wasn't kind of serious at first. It was just like, like, look, my family, you know, like never really helped me out with anything before. Why don't I try thinking of the most positive thing that I could do? Because they're, they're like, well, why don't you shoot for a job at Taco Bell? You know, you could do like work at Taco Bell, Chris. And it's like, uh, so I, I thought of kind of like, you know, an extreme idea of, um, running for president and i started throwing duct tape on my on the side of my car even like i i like put like you know president 2020 on it because i was kind of i'm like look a poor motherfucker like me probably gonna have to you know be like eight years um for me to maybe make it you know i, I gave myself eight years back then in 2012 there's nothing in the rule books that says i can't go straight to the top i had people laugh at me and ignore me and treat me like shit i mean it's going to be a lot of hard work i understand all this you know and it's going to be like such an uphill battle i might as well be you know uh scaling a skyscraper or some shit you know if someone like trump got went to the top someone like me can too i think america has been ready for quite a while but they have been getting our national anthem one of them should be ring around the roses because that's what we do you know we just like circle after circle and um, <laughs> you just keep on going around because there's a lot of the same uh, sediment that's going around uh, was around during Occupy, which was like two presidents ago. And so it just it, and it sickens me like like we need to get some of those Trump people too, you know, like they, they, they got misled, you know, and I feel so bad for the people the, the shit that happened on January 6th. And I mean, that, that was fucked up. But they were really misled. And how dare those leaders do that, you know? And, and yeah, there's a bunch of Republican cowards and Democrats only seem to fight for themselves, you know, like no Medicare for all. Well, okay. Well, how about, how about like I propose a bill like as president? So yeah, am I just supposed to be like some think tank, you know, like that fucking, you know, is only able to propose fucking legislation? If the people can't have Medicare for all, well, okay. How about a bill that like takes away all your fucking medical benefits? You know, why don't, why don't you guys like vote on that? that one huh why why would you want to pass that mm, i wonder you know i'm very genuine about this stuff people might be able to trip me up with a hey would you say what 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 you know and they might be able to make me lose my train of thought or some shit but i'm genuine so you know the mission you know stays the same and essentially i just want to be the bane of the corrupt could i, could I do this please 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 i was doing some thinking as i always do and i uh self-criticize too and i think i mean it, it it can be annoying to like friends and everything that's why i have so little um um, you know, and I criticize them. I criticize myself. It's a gift and it, it's a curse. Um, you need that. I mean, because when you get these cocky ass leaders that never doubt themselves when they're making a mistake, how do you expect them to fucking correct 
course, you know, I mean, it's just simple leadership, right? And do I need a, like some special college classes and degree to fucking understand this shit? No, like I, we, I learned a lot from Bernie, Obama and Trump. There's a lot of lessons, although like my thoughts are all scrambled and uh, fucked up. I, I feel that connecting with people and talking with people through the Internet is a good way to start. I know a lot more needs to be done than that. But getting that initial support, um, you know, is very helpful. I would so love to walk up behind Joe Biden and put my hands on his shoulders and sniff his fucking hair just to make him uncomfortable. So those thoughts... Make me happy, okay? Those are my happy thoughts. Let me have them. And there's, like, I like talking about politics, even when I'm at a job, which is a weakness, sort of, sort of, but you put me in the right environment as a public servant, and then it's not such a bad thing. And uh, I think it's well-deserved to, uh, you know, call me crazy. Um, and, and another thing about that is, like, yeah, I know I'm weird. If you want some normal acting person, like, you know, I do declare, you know, this is, um, you know, un unruly, you know, and how dare people protest uh, in the black traffic. Like, if you want some like normal like acting dude then you're probably going to get a sociopath or a psychopath but yeah you know so i know i'm a little off not a lot of people fantasize about walking up behind joe biden and, and sniffing his hair just to make him uncomfortable like he makes women uncomfortable i know these aren't normal thoughts but i'm i'm a good i i know i'm certain things oh yeah i guess this leads into the next one i i, I was right about a lot of stuff that's like i was right i was right about my family fucking me and, and how they would react and i often have the thought like if all this shit didn't happen to me in the order that it happened maybe i wouldn't be willing to do this stuff maybe like it's kind of good that it did happen to me in the sense that like it has shaped me it has made me who i am and now the corrupt gotta deal with me all right you made this monster now you fucking deal with it um and if i get ended i'm going to hopefully get some ideas a formula out for the next one so if i get ended you know just follow follow the basic formula and keep at it if you keep taking people like us out then just keep at it keep at it and we'll eventually win so yeah you know like i i, I mentioned like going straight to the top everybody laughed at me I had doctors laugh at me like you know and i don't know if they're trying to get a, a rise out of me to try to assess some mental health thing you know it could have just been i was legitly pissed off because you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about and I, you you're all proven wrong in 2016 when someone did go straight to the top you know and with clear mental health issues like worse than i got like i know i got i could admit to my shit other people can't you know no i'm perfect perfect have best words go go fuck yourself and how's that work like, I'm, I took some college, but I don't have a degree. I would be more interested in the knowledge than I would any fucking degree. How, how, how did a well-educated dude work out for you, America, with Obama? And then how did a fucking complete dumbass work out for you with Trump? You know, some could say Bush, too, but, like, Trump makes Bush look smart. And I know Bush is a monster. I'm not saying he doesn't look less like a monster. I'm just saying. If I had to choose someone to be on Jeopardy with, I'm probably picking Bush instead of Trump. But I wouldn't do that. Oh, my God. I Like, I don't want to hang out with any fucking former fucking president. All right. You know, I just want to do my shit. Try to get what I can done. What I could do alone for the people. Because I've been thinking a lot about the obstruction of Congress and what I could do alone. It should be enough for support. So I got to make that case over the next three, seven, you know, you know, ten years or whatever. Eleven years. Sorry. You know, and I have a lot of good ideas and I want to get to that in part two. And uh, I got some ideas on the next one where I'm going to be talking about going undercover with the people so I could escape the echo chamber. I need to protect myself against the echo chamber, too, because I know power corrupts. And it's kind of like I don't want the power. Like, I'm not like greedy, like seething at the mouth. Like, I just know I could do a lot of good with it. But it's it's kind of hard for me to like, you know, like like the sociopath is so much more motivated for that. They're like, yes. Yes, it's going to be all about me, me and the power. And then someone like me, it's like, I'm kind of like nihilistic about it. You know, like if, if America wants me, you know, you can have me. If not, then uh, whatever, I guess, you know, you can have these grandpas and everything and these out of touch fucks that they're grooming, uh, these younger people like uh, the booty judges and the AOCs. So if you want more of that bullshit platitudes, nothing going to get done, gradualism, then, uh, you know, I guess, you know, then fuck me off, you know.
I want to be really like, you know, as transparent as possible. And I want to have discussions in the public. Like, why can't I have discussions every day and people could go to whitehouse.gov and see the live stream and we could all be in a, in, a, in the same room or in one of those little Zoom chats where there's like a dozen people and hopefully there's someone properly moderating it where we're not all talking over each other and shit. Um, but just talking ideas. I just I just care about connecting with people. I want to talk, think, brainstorm some ideas and tactics. Um, I was definitely for, for forced to vote. Um, I felt that was important. The amazing atheist yelled at me back in January. Scared the shit out of my fucking cat, you fucking asshole. Over, like, what do you think about forced to vote? And he's like, you have to vote when you win, when you can win. And then he's like brought up Warcraft and he's like, yeah, yeah, you're just like doing this and, and like attacking too quickly. No, dickhead. It's like. You not even starting the game at all. That's what it's like. What your shit was like. I mean, I, I like the guy. I agree with him a lot of the time. I can't say, you know, 100%, but probably high 80, low 90 percent you know i agree with him on a lot of stuff and i used to listen to him but after that shit it was like man you know i stopped watching him i stopped watching tyt i stopped watching vosh stopped watching all these fucks that was a hard line for me um and now we need these people on our side but right now they need to go sit in the corner and i do not want to associate you know uh, too much with certain people i guess i i mean I'd be willing to talk to the amazing atheist or TJ or Paul's ego or Scotty or all three of them. You know, I was kind of reaching out in their Patreon from time to time. And I think they do need to atone for Brett King. All right, you guys fucking lifted that asshole up. Well, people like me could use a fucking hand too. Some good people. I'll probably get ended before I get put on a fucking ballot. But I, and, and I'm anticipating that. Okay. And hopefully there's other people out there like me that could pick up the baton after something horrible like that happens and we push through and we get this shit done and i'm also feuding with my family about these storage units on top of my grandmother's condo had a two-car garage and i had a buick century and i swear that shit was so tight i needed to climb in and out of the window because they also had their shit you know you're just hoarding your stuff we could have bought all new stuff you, you know so i'm i'm trying to save my grandmother a little bit of money i feel kind of sorry for her during the meals i would complain a lot I, and my mother's solution was always like well if you don't like it move out um my grandmother would make meat and potatoes all the time because that was a common meal that my grandfather liked and that's all she knew how to do you know and i'm like mom you know like i really think we should be adding vegetables to the meal and she's like if you don't like it move out i was trying to get her back into painting too because back in the day she used to paint and i couldn't get her to do that and i wanted her brain to kind of be working a little bit more than usual because she would just have this set routine and then she'll sit and in front of the fucking TV and I fucking hate Nancy Grace and I think you might agree to that mm -hmm. um, but yeah she would just like you know just scare the shit out of my grandmother all the time and all this other bullshit on HLN News and it was uh, really depressing for me she had mental health issues that she was never going to get over in her lifetime I was trying to help her I recognized the uh, de the de deterioration you know of her brain and that's why I bought her like a Nintendo Wii and it was so like depressing because i tried for weeks to train her at, like video games does have a medicinal quality for some like brain deterioration you know if she could just be active in something you know i thought would have been health just like the bowling game they had the wii sports package with all these games on it and there was a bowling game and it had like one button on the top and another on the bottom and that's that's it you know and they, and you aim it you know and and so it was like really easy and you know, I, I put the, you know, the wrist guard around her wrist and, you know, made it tight. And, and I'm trying to train her this simple thing. And week after week goes by and it was just so depressing. And I was trying to get her into painting. Uh, she used to paint all the time. And I was trying to get her kind of back like, into that. I don't know if it was like something against like the lease because, uh, you know, maybe the fumes or whatever. But I, I, I was trying certain things, you know, I was uh, suggesting eating healthy and it just totally went ignored, you know, like my mom's like, well, if you don't like it, move the fuck out, move the fuck out. Like everything was like, move the fuck out. And then like I save her life and it's like later learned that she's a diabetic. And then it's like, well, yeah, we, well, you got to eat vegetables now, you know, obviously, Chris, you know, and if you don't feel comfortable about, you know, poking grandma with a needle after she had a delusion because we totally don't believe you, even though like my other grandparents on my father's side, they both had like mental health, like dementia and all Alzheimer's.
um god i can't even say that fucking word my grandfather on my father's side was like hearing people sing italian songs and shit and he's he was actually from italy i had a hard time understanding him because people with thick accents i don't it's something with my brain like i hear words as other words a lot uh and i confuse things a lot i'm i was really good at audio editing though for whatever reason maybe for uh for that reason you know and stuff will always you know be like that and um so I'm trying to get my grandmother not to pay for these storage units and it's takes I'm trying not to manipulate her like I see my family like manipulates her because I, I'll notice like little things I used to do magic tricks and everything when I was younger and when I would go to the grocery store with my grandmother whatever I suggested first was going to be the option like like maybe more so with people it, it, like with general people it would probably be like 51% or 60% or something but my grandmother it was like 100% like did you want the the white cake or the chocolate cake well i said the white cake first so the white cake what i would do in those situations i would be like well what which one did you want i wouldn't want to say an option because if i said an option she'll pick it so i'm trying to like well which one do you want grandma you know like you know and just kind of being a family you know you know like what the fuck anyway so i'm trying to get my grandmother not to pay for the storage units as i've said multiple times sorry if i sound redundant here and i think i have this cancer mark like on my body so I'm trying to get that checked out and getting like $20 from my grandmother was never an issue ever in the past. And I never really like I'm, I'm taking care of her, but like here, here's like $20, like every five days or something, I could buy some cigarettes, I could buy some gas. It was never really like an issue. But then my mom had somehow like it, it was so it was, I even like uh, broke my hand because I was convincing my grandmother to like stop paying for the storage units and she finally agreed after like seasons of seasons of patient sit down talks and chats and and it's like grandma you gotta you know get, get a backbone and stop paying for this stuff you know because they said it was going to be temporary and it's been years now so you're you, you know and and anyway there's stuff breaking around the house this the faucet needs to be replaced all this stuff needs to be replaced but that's going unfixed because you know my family has the storage units on top of they're just calling you know whenever they need something which is something that i was guilty of too um until i was put in that situation and i'm like oh shit like oh man that's what i was doing oh my god you know i feel so bad and i did feel bad so i wasn't able to get 20 dollars like to go get checked out at like like it wasn't even to fuck around like because sometimes i would ask like like grandma i just would like to drive around and get some cigarettes do you mind you know and she would help me out right you know and so i asked her this day but it was something for something it was more important important than the usual request and something was a little off like my grandmother usually has a routine and she broke from that routine and she was laying down she didn't have her glasses on and but then she was showing a major backbone with me and i wasn't able to get it and i had lost my temper and i had yelled at her. and uh, at the time my style i normally wore black fingerless gloves i pulled the collar of my shirt and i had this mark on my shoulder and i'm like i think i got for cancer you know like i i think i swore at her too you know now I yelled at her because I really wanted to make the errand to wherever I was going. I forget exactly where I, these details. And then a few minutes later, she comes out of her room and I'm in the living room and everything. And she, you know, she says something. I, I actually don't even hear what it is. Like she said something and like threw like $120 in the air or some shit like that and walked away. And then I was like, you know, well, being a poor person, I like, you know, grabbed the 120. I ran back to my grandmother's room a few minutes later and I'm like, look, grandma, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Like, I'm just really, you know, nervous and I don't know why, you know, you're being difficult. That's kind of, you know, um, and in the dark times, I have a, there's a s story with my mother trying to take all this money out of my grandmother's savings account. And my uncle, my mother's brother, was betrayed by my mother, my very uh, greedy, selfish mother. And she, she ha somehow got like a restraining order against him with the claim that he tried strangling her. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, like my mother got a restraining order against her brother, my uncle, Uncle Joe, my good uncle. That the story just really didn't make sense. Over the years, we kind of like, 
grew distant. Um, we, we, we stopped having like little family get togethers. Um, but my mom was trying to keep the townhouse and she was trying to get like tens of thousands of dollars from my grandma. And my uncle was trying to stop that. So my uncle was trying to prevent my mother from her clearing out his mother's and her mother, my grandmother's savings account to try to keep the townhouse a little bit longer to try to sell during the, you know, big bubble in her. And we just lost it anyway. So she took a bunch of money and she somehow got the restraining order, which I totally vouch for him. You know, if he ever ends up seeing this or something, you know, that didn't make sense. And then, and then I noticed those little things, you know, I put my hand on her shoulder and she like jumps and shit, like, like, you know, when I'm calmly explaining something to her, you know, just sometimes you do that with people like that you're close with, you know, shit, you know, like family. It's like, you know, just chill out or sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Fuck, you know, holy shit. And actually, after living with grandmother for so long that I'm starting to notice that she's a she has a disdain towards men. I'm sorry. I forget that word again. Misandrist. Um, misandrist. Yeah, that she's like a misandrist. Like anytime I would walk past her, she would she would freeze up and like tip, you know, like an animal or something. So anyway, that happens. I actually accept all the money. You know, I go out, I buy a big bag of weed, I fill up my gas tank, I buy a few packs of cigarettes. I have a few, to, like 10 or 15 hours left. I actually was doing, I, I think, the president thing then too, because, yeah, so it, it started like right around then. But anyway, two days later, the police show up, like into my bedroom, like all out of nowhere. Like my grandmother wasn't home. You know, I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm chilling on my bed. I got my glasses off. I got my cats and everything. I'm just, I'm just chilling. And then the police like storm my room. Oh yeah. Before I get into the police thing, that's when I discovered you and the amazing atheist. And I, I was, um, a, a, a new, uh, um, kind of discovering atheism and whatnot. And I, 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 uh, I'm still an atheist and whatnot, but, um, all right. I, I discovered Matt Dillahunty. I watched the atheist ex experience for years. I did actually try contacting. Yeah, that's where Dillahunty, that's where I'm fucking up. Before all this shit happened, like a, a week, maybe a month before all this shit happened, I tried contacting Matt Dillahunty on Facebook. And as you could realize, I could be a little verbose or wordy at times. And I sent him a really, really long Facebook message. Now, instead of him saying, like, look, I can't fucking, like, read all or, and respond to all this stuff. Like, like, could you send me a shorter version, like one or two things or anything? He decided to have the police do a wellness check on me. So I have an interaction with the police shortly before all this. What I later learned is my mother took my family, took my grandmother to the police to do something about this, you know, because I'm feuding with my family. I actually just recently threw a bunch of stuff out of the garage, you know, and I threw it in the dumpster because I'm like, look, I'm going to start throwing shit away, you know. And, and and one little thing I said to my family during this time is I was scanning in all these family photos, which was taking, like, it took me weeks to scan in, like, this box of family photos. So I told my family, I'm like, look, look, if you if you want these photos, you either scan them in yourselves or give me money. You know, like I was kind of like there was a rift between me and my family and I was trying to get my grandmother not to pay for all this to essentially hoard for my mom to hoard all her shit that she spent my dad's paychecks on anyway. So I get sent to jail immediately. That was the Orland Park police that picked me up. I lived in Orland Park, at Illinois at the time. What did they arrest you for? The, the hearsay that I shook my fist at my grandmother that was interpreted like like me jabbing my shoulder yelling freaking my grandmother out at that moment was me like 1930 style and now the only time i ever shake my fist is when i tell my the story you know <laughs> like like but yeah they got me on the like put them up grandma oh jesus and and i'm a little bit fucked up in the head too though so i'm I'm, but I'm trying to correct myself. I was doing all these things. So my family focused on fucking me instead of helping my grandmother. And I think I mentioned a little bit about this already. That was like when I jabbed my shoulder and my grandmother thought that I was shaking my fist at her. That was probably a stroke that like, like a micro stroke. Like, cause she was having the same sort of, like it was a weird day. You know, she left stuff on, she left stuff like, like stuff was left out and, and it's tor and she has like a normal set routine. So anything that deviates from that is kind of like, Hmm, I wonder if everything's all right, but it wasn't that severe. It wasn't as severe. Like on a scale from one to 10, it was probably like, like a two while the day that I, 
called the ambulance in, in the future in, in December of 2012, uh, where it was learned that she had a stroke and that she was a diabetic. That one was probably like a five or a six. You know, she was like, you know, sweating and shit. Um, she didn't have her glasses on, which was odd. She only take them off to go to bed un unless she was feeling really bad. But I, I guess she was laying in bed anyway. You know. So yeah, I, well, I guess I did mention it because like my mom swooped in there, like, oh, like I'm the hero. Like Chris, you've been trying for years to try to eat healthier, but now since it's learned that she's a diabetic, now we're going to start eating healthier. And you go fuck yourself, Chris. It was like what? Like they just focused on fucking me instead of like. Like, I'm trying to help grandma out, and everyone's taking advantage of her. Everyone's taking more from her. And I'm the one fucking, like, helping her out around the house. I'm letting her do things because I feel that moving around is helpful because she complains about arthritis all the time. And when you're just sitting there doing nothing, it's just going to get fucking worse. And, and actually, right before all that happened, I got into the small stupidest not even a fight but an argument with that with this chick that i was dating or we went on a few dates i guess we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend but we went on like four or five dates and we got into like a stupid argument and then a short time later i disappear and uh, and anyway so i get sent to jail then um from there they sent me to cook county jail which was like hell on earth immediately i get sent to the mental ward and then they put me on antipsychotics so they pretty Jesus. much like i'm starting to feel good for once in my life like it's like man i haven't felt like this since like my 20s you know like when i was out there dancing and i was having a fun time i had so much confidence like i would be the first motherfucker out there dancing you know and then when other, when you start dancing like a few minutes later typically other people start joining in but i'll be the first one out there and and since uh, everything that's happened to me now now i've been kind of hiding and i've been kind of i think i've been traumatized but anyway they take me to the mental part of cook county jail and cook county jail sucks it's like hell on earth um only one warm meal a day too cold one warm so i and i understand like the racial disparity too because i think chicago is close to a third black but the jail is like 95 percent black you know it is fucked up and I, I talk back to one of the, the little things that i would like to do i would have a personal vendetta against the harry or harrison officer harry or harrison that when i first got to that jail um he slammed my head when i talked back to him into the counter so yeah uh, they're fucking assholes in there treat you like animals and th there's lots of stories and details to get into there where you know they huddled like 50 people in a tiny 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 room you know there's not enough room to even sit and they they, they have you there for hours and hours and hours and I was saying shit in jail, like when I first went, you know, I, I, I called my mother, the person doing this to me. And, uh, you know, I'm like, you're not going to get Secret Service protection. And she's like, why would you say something like that? It's like, well, because you're like, first of all, like you're smearing me. And yeah, you're like totally fucking me. It's like she's such a manipulative bitch because all she knows how to do is get like get and be selfish and like cash my dad's checks and all that shit. When she made me homeless, I was living with her for a little bit and her boyfriend before they attacked me. And it was like, it, like I was pacing around like all the time, like every day, like the anxiety was like through the roof. And, um, it was, it was really intense. And she, she needed to use my food stamps. So she, she had her food stamps and then she needed my food stamps. And then she like went to like Trader Joe's, you know, bought like, a half a paper grocery bags worth of like expensive ass fish. And then like, you know, that's like, I guess maybe two weeks like worth of food, you know, but that like, that was it, you know? And I, I, it, it was just like, like, why can't I just buy my own food, you know, and I'll eat that. So yeah, she was very manipulative fucking bitch. I was being fucked with though, because they took all my medications away. So I went from taking Ritalin and an antidepressant and feeling good about my life to starting smoking again and being put on an antipsychotic that made me drool a lot. And like to the point where I just couldn't even think properly. It was almost like a form of like being purposely medically retarded like that's that's how it made me feel like it, it was really messed up everyone thinks that i'm kind of crazy um especially my family there was a lot of gaslighting going on i took a deal to get out it's like i had a, a public defender he's like he's like well you, you you could change your plea within 30 days 
and and that that was the game plan. So I was going to plead guilty and then change my plea later. And how could you fuck that up? Like you got 30 days. 30 days is a long time, you know? Well, first of all, like that, and this is the problem. Like, like people can't even get coffee when they go to court, you know? Like you're so, you're woken up like at four in the morning in jail. You know, if you got court at eight in the morning, you're woken up extra early. They don't give you time to like have a nice morning or give you coffee so your brain is functioning. So you're at your worst just about when you're going to court. You're, yeah, I, I was sleep deprived in jail. Like there, there were like, I couldn't sleep for like days until I was so tired that I just literally passed out. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and, and then, um, and, and then being put on like, they, they put me on Respiral. You know, they're, they're like, well, you're crazy. You know, you want to run for president. You're crazy. And this is before Trump, right? You know, so, um, right? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So I wonder what they, what some of them think now, you know. Is, uh... So I, I take a deal. All right. I'm, I'm ordered to get a mental health evaluation and one year of court supervision, right? Um, it was the lowest misdemeanor or whatever. Oh, no, the, the cops, upon arresting me and busting into my room to give me nightmares the rest of my life, um, they found like a gram of weed on my desk, which I do not have now. I totally stopped smoking, but back then I totally did smoke, right? You know, so I got the, the weed. You know, and the cops were all really thrilled over that. And that charge got dropped out, dropped. So like the, the thing that I was guilty of got dropped. The thing that I'm not guilty of got fucking, you know, stuck. You know, it was weird. You know, that's how our justice system works, though. So I'm, any anyway, and I was stupid back then. I did a lot of stupid stuff, and that was stupid. You know, I, I, I took a deal for something I didn't do, and that was really, really stupid. And I couldn't, okay, so that, I think that court date was in the morning, maybe early afternoon. I didn't get processed out of Cook County Jail until like 12 hours later, and I was given no note. Like, no note, like, here's what to do. Like, you know, like I knew about the mental health evaluation and that was the thing that my family focused on. But I'm like, there's something else. There's something else. You know, I, I, I was homeless for a few days living in my vehicle because one thing that the cops did was when my grandmother and my, my, my mother took my grandmother to the police to have me arrested. The police are like, well, here, sign this. Sign, sign right here. Cause I remember talking with my grandmother later on and she was requesting that I spend one day in jail. Now, you know, you and I both know that that's not a request, but from her generation, it was probably something, you know, when my grandfather was out of control, take him down to the station for the night, let him cool off. You know, that wasn't this case. And after hearing that, the cops still had her sign that thing. And what was that thing? It was an order of protection to make me homeless. Pretty much. I can't live with her now. And, um, so I was homeless. I, I eventually checked myself into, um, uh, a mental hospital in Naperville, Illinois. Linda notes, I was only there like four days. They do a mental health evaluation on me. And actually during this time, um, the little, little side story here, you like listen to podcasts and everything, right? You know, yeah. I was, I was listening to some science one at the time, um, astronomy cast with, uh, Dr. Pamela Gay. And she told me, or she told, you know, the podcast, she was talking about it, and I remember it. And it was one of those things I would actually, at the time, around 2012, I was doing all sorts of goofy goofy shit. But this would be like some random fact that I would give some people. And a few people did check it out, and they're like, whoa, it was totally true. But anyway, so I would I would mention this a lot, and it's kind of important uh, that I did this, even. And, and it was so random, but anyway. um, You know when the moon is really big along the horizon, it's usually 10 or 15 degrees Mm -hmm. All right. So that's an illusion. It's really the same, you know, uh, size as is way high up in the sky, sky, but your brain is playing a trick on you. And in order for you to kind of like undo that trick, to undo that illusion, you need to change your perspective. And an easy, easy way to do that is just look at the moon between your legs, you know, bend over. And it sounds like I'm trying to get you to do something stupid and silly, but if you do it, and it's the neatest thing. Show your kids that shit. They'll, 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 they'll be like standing up and it looks big. You're looking at it through your legs and it looks normal and small. And it's a way to kind of turn on and off an illusion. And this is why I don't trust the mental health evaluation. But they say I got bipolar. I forget which one, one or two. And and maybe so. But if they were trying to convince me of it, I think they went about it the entirely wrong way. Uh, because without any diagnosis or evaluation, I was immediately put on an antipsychotic, like immediately. And that made it hard for me to think clearly, really hard. Uh, um, and, and being thrown into homelessness for the first time in my life, um, it was a really hellish experience. I, I went into the hospital. That's what my family had focused on. 
they had told the hospital employees upon helping me check in and gaslighting me that I wanted to throw out the family photos, which is something that, like, I was throwing out shit, but I wasn't throwing out that shit. I, and, and I specifically recall talking to my sister, you know, like, look, if you guys want the family photos, you do it yourself or you fucking pay me for the fucking work that I did, taking weeks and many hours, you know, scanning all this shit in. Because cause we were kind of fighting at that time, so we weren't really, you know, on the best of terms. But yeah, um, well, the doctors also mentioned in the mental health evaluation that Chris thinks he could shatter the moon by looking in between his legs, which is totally not what I just said a few moments ago. <laughs> you know, like like that. You know, mm -hmm. you could sh yeah, you could shatter the moon illusion by doing that. But if you leave that one word illusion out, then it sounds like some bad shit, crazy shit. <laughs> All right. So that this is the beginning of. Yeah, what I call the darker times. And I didn't get in contact with that chick until like a month and a half later. And she had found someone else to kind of date and uh, have sex with and all that stuff. Um, she was that chick that I took her on a date. She she had some mental health issues. She had schizophrenia, you know, but that didn't deter me. Um, she told me not to buy her too many drinks, but she kept on asking for it. And we were at this place called The Exit in Chicago. And I bought, and, and but she kept on asking and I kept buying her, buying her and buying her drinks and then we went home for the night and this is that story where she, she actually like i'm driving her home she lives off of 95th street i'm you know i'm coming from exit so uh, or coming from uh the, the exit the, it's it's a place called the exit um so we're going up in the streets so it's like 55th street 57th street 58th street you know so it's like look you know baby i'm taking you home all right you know but she's a little kind of incapacitated she doesn't understand and i understand that like i i'm i'm cool you know i i'm kind of more understanding with people with mental health issues than other people are and she ends up punching me in the head a couple times like because she thinks that i'm not taking her home but then like five minutes later she's like offering me like roadhead you know and i'm like man i really wanted to take that i really wanted to that's dangerous bro if they keep forgetting next thing you know she's gonna bite your cock well see no no see oh man like i'm a total freak i guess because i have one of those or, or at the time tell me you like having your cock bitten no 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 i had i had one of those little gags but it, 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 it it's a circle so they can't bite down oh you are jesus man what was that hanging yeah. from your rear view I, pr I no no i had like a little bag of naughty stuff that i kind of brought with me and that was one of them. so if the cops search your car they got something to be like jesus christ yeah 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 de de definitely you know definitely some adult toys in there um you know so but, but yeah they, like yeah, yeah there's my little i don't i have not found a willing victim though so you know, whatever so she couldn't give consent and we never had and, and this is probably where i screwed up i probably could have had sex with her prior to that so if we already established that pattern that she was cool with it so if she was shit face drunk i wouldn't you know like look we've been having sex already so sure today you know today all because you're a little incapacitated we're still gonna you know get down you know um but that wasn't the case that would have been the first time so i had to decline because i'm like look you just can't give consent there's no prior pattern that could, you know, hint to consent, you sure. know, so I just, I rejected it being the nice guy. Probably a smart move from somebody that, like, punches you in the <laughs> face right before they offer you head. I mean, like, that, that's someone that can change their, their mind very, very quickly. And so you probably did the right thing. Even though you might look back and be like, man, may I, maybe I should have done it differently. No. Nah, she did doesn't it just even right. remember. I remember bringing it up to her and she's like, I don't even remember it. And I'm like, oh, well, this just goes like, you know, like seeing all these political leaders, even like creepy Joe Biden with the, <laughs> you know, like sniffing the hair and shit, you know, and then Trump. It's like, it's like, wow, maybe I should have lived a different life because apparently qualification for becoming president is you got to fucking uh, sexually assault women or creep mm -hmm. them out and like, like some, you know, like I know I creep out women with offering them foot rubs, but at least I'm not walking up into their personal space, sniffing their shit. You know, like, like I get permission before I do that shit. Okay. You know, consent. Like I used to hang around the goths and the, the freaks, you know, and, and I'm proud to be a freak and a punk myself. Uh, and, and the bondage community that was all intertwined and the, we, we, us freaks take consent very seriously. You know, at least we should. 
Yeah. Uh, so I go through that little bit of hell. Um, she and and I lost my opportunity with that chick. Like it was it was really that it really fucked me up because I was like, look, I screwed up a lot in the past, and I'm totally not going to let it happen again. And then essentially, like, I mean, I don't think me getting into a tiny argument, like, dude, it was about like adult sex toys too. It was the stupidest shit. It was the stupidest argument. I'm homeless. I'm struggling. Uh, eventually get the order of protection lifted after a few months. But one thing I did right away, like, so I got arrested. I spent a month in Cook County Jail. I did a, I, I did a deal to get out. I cannot remember the details of that deal, though. And I didn't think to call my public defender. But I, I didn't even know, like, it's like, man, there's something I got to do, but I can't remember what it is. I couldn't think of that until, like, 30, 35 days later or something. It was, it was, like, just past the 30 days. So now this shit is going to stick. How long um, ago was that? Uh, 2012. I mean, that's... The whatever. record could be sealed, but it's it's like the lowest misdemeanor. And if you believe the bullshit, like, oh, I, I want to beat up my grandmother, which is totally not what I... You know, that's not me. But <laughs> if, if you want to believe that shit, then I got some shit. Like, I, I recorded my family attacking me, and the police didn't do shit. So, and, and so, so they get away with it with no charges, but somehow I get some bullshit charge. And that's how they fuck people. But... It, it it all seems like a really big negative, TJ, but it actually is a really, really positive. And I don't know if it could have happened any other way because it has given me life experiences that I think uniquely qualifies me for what I want to do because I've been through that shit. I've taken sure. deals for shit I never did. And they have fucked so many millions of us that I could relate to them. You know, like, like you know, that shit could be turned around. You know, like, there, there's a lot of people, innocent people out there that have a bullshit record. They take a deal just to get out of hell. You know, their head is being fucked with. They can't think of shit properly. 30 days had just lapsed or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, I've been through that shit. I've been homeless. There's very shitty resources out there for, well, when you're homeless. Sure. Um, I, 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 I feel you, like, look, man, all of my charges are, are fucking cannabis related, except for one underage drinking when I was 19, when I wasn't even drinking. I was, <laughs> I was at a party. Didn't even, I had gotten there like 30 minutes before and hadn't even made my way in. Like I was shooting the shit with a buddy outside. Hadn't even gone in and had a beer yet. I was planning on it, but I hadn't even gotten to that point yet. And I got arrested for underage drinking and I got taken to the local PD and then the booking office and then fucking the, um, the uh, county jail where I was like in I'm like over an underage drinking and where they where they proceeded to release me of my own recognizance before putting me in gem pop like so, like they're in, I'm like okay so this was serious enough to go through all those steps but then you're just gonna release me you could have released my ass from the first fucking place you know what I mean yeah like you you just try if this is the lesson you're teaching me it's to fucking think the state is retarded that's that's where that's m the lesson it's you've taught me and guess what guess guess who's been arrested God knows how many fucking tickets and arrests I've it's got to be like six or seven at least look at the lesson I've learned. Yeah. Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's sh that should all be legal. In fact, I'm all for like having fast food workers be able to smoke weed on the job. It is such a mild drug. And in order to deal with so many asshole customers, I think citizens should definitely have so, the right like to McDonald's, smoke a joint at work. Yeah. McDonald's is never going to get on board with that because it's like a safety hazard. But I think that if a place wants to allow people to do that and they want to take on maybe like a little bit of extra insurance, because because let's be honest, you don't want someone that just smoked like three blunts back to back dropping off your steaming hot fajita. Well, like, dude, <laughs> you should know what the effects are on you before you, you operate or drive. Absolutely. You know, like I, I've always smoked marijuana and driven and i've never once caused an accident with one exception and we could get into that uh, later <laughs> but that but but i wasn't no it wasn't weed there were uh, yeah it, it was the medications they were forcing me to take oh i mean those that'll fuck you up way worse than weed ever will uh, like i'll put it to you this way my, my old lady right now we have a strain right now and you know she smokes as well and she's like i hate this weed yeah i'm like why and I, I was like, I think it's fucking fantastic. And she's like, all it does is make me tired and give me the munchies. She's like, all I want to do is eat and go straight to sleep. It's like, got to be the worst thing for you ever. She's more the creative type. 
Well, yeah, sativa. Get the sativa then. Yeah, well, um, it's it's not really like I said. I buy directly from a grower, so it's whatever the hell he's growing is what I what I get. I, because I there don't... was times like I just smoked pot. Like I had so many people asking me at the dance club for hardcore drugs, but I and and maybe that is my mania. Maybe, maybe I do have bipolar or or ADHD or whatever. I thought it was just me being hyper and in a good mood, but I just smoke weed. But there was days. You know, because I bought it off some guy, it wasn't legal in Illinois at the time. So there was days where it's like, man, it made me focused. I was hitting all the notes properly and everything. And then there was other days where I would smoke some and it was like, man, I just like fucking pass out. Yeah. And I didn't know there was a difference between like indica and sativa yeah, until I moved to Colorado. A huge difference. And there's plenty of hybrids and blends and stuff like yeah. that. But like you get some of that, that high sativa. And it, and it is a totally different experience. Yeah. Also, yeah, they, I found out that, you know, I didn't know for a long time, like, the difference between eating, like, you know, doing edibles and ingesting it versus smoking it is also a very different kind of high feeling. And it can affect you differently. It makes a lot of people tired, but it makes a lot of people feel like they want to go fucking work out. So there's differing effects for different people. Personal responsibility is what you're, what the goal here is. Just don't be an asshole that puts other people at risk. Yeah. Don't don't like get high while you're making grilled cheeses and pass out and like set your house on fire. Like yeah. or, you know well, or or anything like that. That's all you, all you got to do. Well, here's here's the one argument that I'm 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 kind of like, you know, it's like the main thing that my thinking revolves around is like people go off to work and they fucking do 8, 10 or 12 hour days. They get in their cars and they drive home. They are not at 100% anymore when they get in their cars. Uh, their argument is like, well, you take weed and you're not going to be at 100%. And oh, it's yeah. like, yeah, just like the rest of everyone, but they're fucking working and that makes it all right. They, you know, like, like we're all tired. We're all mm -hmm. not at a hundred percent, but is it enough to make you so detrimental that you're a danger? I've avoided accidents, like, like straight up, like, like someone blows a red light. In, like I lived out in Orland Park and there was like, you know, 45 mile an hour speed limit and these long ass roads and shit. And the, I was stoned as fuck and I had stopped at a green light because I see this motherfucker. Uh, in the perpendicular direction, you know, about to blow the red light, you know, and it's like, I did all that shit high. Some people can't drive, like, people are always like, man, look at all the accidents, fucking drunk drivers. And sure, drunk driving does not help accidents. That's not the argument here. But the argument that accidents only happen from people who are, you know, discombobulated, that's fucking ridiculous. Accident, sober people get into accidents all the fucking time. People suck at driving in general. So the people we're worried, or most people are worried about, like, if you suck at driving and then you're inebriated, like, then you're really going to suck at driving. Oh, the, rest, yeah. the rest of us that are just fucking like, we don't suck at everything, like, we can handle it. I totally get I, where you're coming from. I had a friend. I had a friend. Like, she, she would totally, like, um, like when she would be high and everything, she totally couldn't drive. Like, I saw my life flash, you know, in front of my eyes, like, a few times, you know, each trip I made with her in her car. But it was like that when she was totally sober, too. You know, she was like one of those people that would jerk the steering wheel when she was like trying to make a turn, you know, instead of doing a smooth motion. Fucking terrifying. Oh, dude, it is. It is. But she couldn't drive sober. <laughs> it was the thing. You so. know what's scary as shit is people that instead of like when I'm making a turn, it's like this, okay? Arm over arm. Those people yeah. that do this. Yeah. That's like, jerking they, they around. They shimmy it over and they never. They never like just make a smooth motion with a wheel that I'm like, I don't trust you. You can't make quick movements. You suck at driving here in Florida. They finally said, look, once you're past, like, I think it's 80 years old, you got to take a driving test like every year or you got you got to come in every year and make sure that you can still drive there are too many accidents from old people. Yeah. The, the yeah, license definitely. was good for 15 years. So if you come in there when you're, you're 73 and you can drive. Okay. And then when you're 86, you can't drive okay, but your license is still valid, and they get, they fucking hurting people. Notice when I said like I haven't caused any accidents, um, because I definitely get rear-ended uh, growing up in the Chicago land area. Whoa, I don't need to know the... about your sex life, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I I get you. Like you know, people people are stupid. I I hope you get a little bit of money out of that shit as well, because every time that I've been hit, I I never like I never pull the oh my neck shit, but at the same time, I'm like you're paying for this fucking car. I don't care how how like shitty the car is whatever the parts would cost to fucking put on here and paint that's what you're paying for i might not even fix it the money just might go in the bank because i usually drive beaters that's 
it's like my style. I drive a beater. That way, if there's a fucking scratch or a ding or a dent or whatever, I'm not like, woo, woe is me, because I'm I'm driving a beater. I want to drive a beater too. Um, well, I mean, I don't like I don't mind. Like, I actually got a van. It got rear-ended. Someone gave me the van. It's a we'll, we'll, we'll get into that, but it got rear-ended and totaled out. So it's just kind of sitting in storage right now. Surprisingly, none of the windows are broken on it though, and that was the the van that I was last homeless and kind of living in. It was it was uh it was kind of amazing actually. Um, I but, love vans. Uh, My dad had a freaking high top conversion I, van I, that was fantastic. I've been meaning to ask you, cock uh, or TJ. Either um, way. <laughs> yeah, I'm so um, used to people be calling me cock. It's really weird, but whatever. No, I do. I do like 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 when I'm in uh, chat or whatever. And and when I fuck around with DM, I'm like, oh yes, DM secretly likes anal. Like I'm not being malicious. I'm not trying to be. I'm just fucking around, being playful. The only the only grievance I had is what I talked about earlier. Sure. That you know, DM is a cool guy. You know, I I, I any chat. I, I love him to playful. death. And then you know, I'm sure you know that Dark Matter was subscribed to me. Before he even started making videos. And, and back then, when he was subscribed to me, YouTube was like kind of fresh. And it was like the political side of YouTube was, and the religious side, the, the atheist side yeah, of it was, was like so totally like this fresh thing. It was a different platform back then than what it is now. So you have to understand like the change that happens. I'm still the same motherfucker. It's just that this get up and gig that I had going back, you know, it's the same I'm doing now as I was doing back then. But back then it was like, whoa, you got Look kids now, though, yeah. and you got oh, a yeah. life happens sometimes. I don't, I don't you know? have all the free time, but guess what? Eventually they'll start going to school and I'll start getting my free time back and shit like that. And I'm very serious about not necessarily bringing back my channel, uh, but at least putting some content on there and also starting some other ideas that I've had ones that are not even close to my normal content, like um I think you've heard me mention the uh it's the recent the, thing in the, the, the last the, show that you guys did. The the well that that as well, but but I wanted to do like uh like hoity toity heavy metal. Like where 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 I freaking like put on a monocle and a top hat. And, yeah, yeah, I remember read, you mentioned yeah, that read on the heavy podcast. Me- read heavy metal lyrics as if I'm, like, too fucking good for everybody. Yeah, yeah, speaking of which, everybody, go check out the goddamn podcast. This guy's on it. He uh, yeah. he does most of the talking most of the time, but uh, it's a little different today. Sorry if it's a little boring. Not uh, Back in 2012, I was actually, um, like... One of my styles was a like a T-shirt and a dress shirt, like an unbuttoned dress shirt, and I would keep a notepad and pen around, and I would make notes because I would like understand my own weaknesses, and I'm kind of forgetful, so I'd make notes and be Bro. all responsible and everything. And you you talking to the wrong one? Look at this. I got I got this one's full and this one's almost full. I'm I I'm constantly writing shit down. Yeah, I wonder how many ideas that I had, like, of, of, like, running for president or everything, like, that I've, like, forgotten about, but I wrote it down, but I, because of all this homelessness and life destruction, I, I don't know what it is, like, I lost the notes and everything. So I'm starting to have my life destroyed. It was, um, it was on top of losing, um, that one opportunity with that one chick that took me, it took me like a decade to find, like, I swear to God, no responses. Like, nobody's interested. Nobody's interested in that shit. It's like, all right. All right. You know, speaking of which, I, a little a little aside, I'm kind of a polyamorous person. I'm into open relationships. I wouldn't mind having a first lady that was into also into open relationships. And we could kind of spread the love. If someone wanted to hang out with the first lady one night, someone that needed a spotlight. Bro, you're, you're more forgiving than most. You know, um, I'm very open, and actually, we get into some really good ideas uh, publicly instead of the private stuff. Sure. Um, they have me do a mental health evaluation. I could already see a clear error in it. You know, they're like, Chris thinks she could look at, you know, the, the moon and shatter it, you know, and just all sorts of stupid shit. So they're half ass listening to me at the fucking hospital. I give that report, though, to um, my probation officer. Now, the court case was at Bridgeview, Illinois. Um, I was living in Orland Park, Illinois. The court case was in Bridgeview, Illinois, but they had me go to Skokie, Illinois, which was like a two hour drive. Now you might see on Google Maps or something, it's like 55 minutes or whatever, but there's traffic, you know, and, and like in, in around Chicagoland, especially any time in the business time, like you might be able to catch a little bit before the lunch break and a little bit after the lunch break, but pretty much between nine and five, there's so many roads that are parking lots. You know, it's just yeah. like one massive parking lot. You know, so I'm homeless. 
I don't have money, and they're making me drive like almost two hours to this fucking probation officer, right, to to go see. So I give him the mental health evaluation. He makes copies of it, and this will come into play later on in the story. And, um, you know, so I'm like, okay, well, I completed the one request, you know, that the court wanted me to do. The mental health evaluation is out of the way, but this distance is the problem. So could I transfer my probation officer to... Like, why am I having the court case in Bridgeview and the probation officer in Skokie? Can't I have everything at Bridgeview? So I transfer to, I, I only remember the guy, uh, the guy's name was Dan from Skokie. Um, and that was, he was a probation officer, um, back in 2012. Um, this happened around April. Um, I forget exact dates. Um, when, when I, when I initially got arrested happened in April. So this is probably around June now. You know, I got in touch with the probation officer, did my first visit. I transfer from Dan to Beth Porch at Bridgeview, Illinois. And from there, she will be my probation officer for the remainder of the one-year court supervision that I was uh, punished with. Speeding forward, I, we, we get the order of protection lifted. You know, I'm, I move back with my grandmother. November comes around. They want to, they're, they're giving me those antipsychotics plus lithium, and they want to check my blood, my doctors that I'm seeing. And I'm like, well, like, I made it clear to the courts and everything. I'm going to stop these treatments when you guys, you know, when I'm not being forced to anymore. I'd just rather not get my blood checked. Little did I know that will come back to bite me later on and very shortly. So that's around November. During th that one time, though, I kind of brushed over. I was living with my mom and her boyfriend at her place when I was homeless. I was homeless for a short while, and then eventually I started living there. I got a job as a taxi driver where I actually I worked six 12-hour days and I made like a few hundred a week on top of all the expenses I had to pay. Um, and I did that for a few months, like like four or five months until I, uh, I had quit. Um, and then I had moved back with my grandmother. So I was like living kind of with the people that like fucked me, which kind of like it was a really uneasy feeling during this time period. I, I, I couldn't stop pacing around. I was like pacing around back and forth, um, just anxiety levels and all sorts of other shit just through the roof. So now we're going like to the end of the year of 2012. Around November, I opt out of a blood test. December comes around and again, my grandmother breaks her routine. And I noticed something's up, you know, she left the TV on, there was all this um, food left out and whatever, and I got the instinct to check on her, you know, and then I had a bad thought, um, you know, after, I was like, maybe I should check on her, and then I'm like, fuck that bitch, you know, I'm going through all this hell because of the, you know, um, you know, everything, you know, but I, I, I quickly, you know, like a minute or two later, I come to my senses, and I'm like, well, technically, it's everyone else that's manipulating her, it's my mom that's manipulating her it's the police the, the the she's like i just want him to spend the night in jail uh yeah here miss go sign this you know they knew what they were fucking doing so i check on my grandmother and um she's she's not doing well you know she uh you no know, i ask her you know if i need to call the ambulance and she wants me to call my mother first so i call my mother and i swear like, I'm skipping over this part, but um, I had people following me and everything. I would often say online that the, the Mythbusters would blow random junk up with explosives, and I ain't no terrorist, but I want to win the White House, to kind of fuck with the NSA, I guess. Troll them. And I think that's a good tactic. We should be trolling the NSA more uh, to make sure they do a better job at targeting, you know, actual threats. Think of it like a little test, you know, and uh, you shouldn't be going around harassing people like that are clearly making jokes on Twitter and I think they should be better and but anyway I was trolling them I was having p people following me around and I have very interesting stories to tell at a later time um, I believe there was someone uh, in jail with me I don't know if they were local or higher up I don't know and, and, and it, and it, it kind of became a problem because when I was talking to mental health care professionals they're like do you think people are following you and it's like well I mean, like, I don't mean to sound like a crazy person, but, like, I've been saying some stuff that would definitely get me flagged, you know, uh, uh, with the national security, and to have people check up on me isn't 
too far out of the question, you know, that that doesn't sound insane to me, you know, but it seemed kind of insane to them. So I really wish that they had captured if my phone calls were being recorded because some people witnessed this. Some people saw what happened to me and I don't know their ability to tell the truth or whatever. But, you know, if you want to add to this story, if you're one of those people following me around um, and to describe what you witnessed, um, you know, go for it if you're able to speak up. But when I was talking to my mother, she was like, I'm taking care of empty boxes, Chris. I really wish I was recording that because it just goes to show like, like, like I was crawling on my family's ass about getting rid of the storage unit stuff. Then she's talking about empty boxes at her boyfriend's house. I mean, she is such, she really liked that movie Flowers in the Attic, but I didn't know that she aspired to be the woman in there and she would definitely eat her own because all this stuff was about kind of fucking me out of my grandmother's life. So so my gra- so my mother could get more um get a little bit more money get me out of the will you know when my father died i actually never saw a cent and he was an architect and i'm sure he left something behind but i'm pretty sure that my mother took it all you know and usually people get a hand up when their parent dies I never got anything. And no, like, like, look, I'm not saying, like, the world owes me something. I'm just saying some people, when they have a tragedy in their life, they get, they get a helping hand after that fucking blow to the gut, okay? And I never got that helping hand is all. That's all I'm saying. Right or wrong, it, it, it's, it's life. It's the cards that were dealt, all right? So I call the hospital, you know, because my mom is like, okay, well, I guess if you're not, you know, like, grandma's not doing well, I, I, I you know, I'm going to call the hospital, so I call the hospital, 911, or, and uh, I have uh, the paramedics come out, and they take her over to the hospital. And it was later discovered that she was having a stroke and that she was a diabetic. While she was in the hospital, I had a court date. Um, and during this court date, I had gone in, and they're like, oh, well, you didn't get that blood test, so we're going to have to send you back to jail. So I uh, spent... Christmas of 2012 in Cook County again for two weeks. Um, I spent the New Year's uh, from 2012 into 2013 in Cook County. And I think I got out January 2nd or 3rd. It was like at 2 in the morning. They take like a dozen hours to process you out of there. Like it is a really long time um, each and every single time. And it, it is a really large jail. And um, I mean, there's lots of stories to tell. I don't, I don't want to really get into all that now. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I'm almost... <laughs> Keep it going. You you got this. So getting out of jail there, um, I think my grandmother is still in the hospital. I'm having a hard time remembering, but my grandmother either broke her hip, she had fell down. I wasn't there to help move furniture or to help her in any way. She fell down and broke her hip. That either happened when I was in jail at that time or... I'm kind of fast forwarding to February, so th- I know it's a two month difference. I'm having a hard time remembering the details. Be- in February, I visited my doctor and I didn't want to harm myself. I didn't want to harm other people. And I actually have this recorded and documented somewhere. I recorded my doctor's visit. Um, I wasn't saying that I was president or that I am president. I wasn't saying anything crazy like that. I just wanted to run for president and they send me away against my will to a mental hospital. So there's lots of failures now, you know, you know, just under a year into the story. We got a failure of the justice system. Um, we got a failure now of the mental health care system where someone like me gets sent away, you know, and, and, and a lot of these places like that place in Elgin, Illinois, where they sent me to the state hospital for 10 days from February 5th, I believe, to February 15th. And... They, they, they would show me lists. They're like, look at all these famous people. See, Abraham Lincoln, he just had depression. Edgar Allan Poe has bipolar. Do you see any presidents that have bipolar? The bipolar, 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 bipolar. It's like, goddamn, you know, like, even if I do have what you say that I have, I think, you know, I would like to have some people around me to keep me in check, you know, to, to keep my shitty emotions at bay. I definitely don't want someone mindlessly agreeing with me, a mindless yes man. I need to have a truer friend than that if I'm going to have a sidekick or someone in my life. I, I, w- I did have a thing with the with this other chick when I was homeless, and whatever my politics are was her politics. Whatever my religion was was her religion. And then she started seeing someone else, and then her politics and religion totally changed. You know, She was totally on board with the atheist stuff. And then she started dating someone else, and then she's like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know, and it's like, okay, I, that, that kind of woman or, you know, partner is not what I look for. 
Um, in case there's anyone you know listening that's interested, um, I make sandwiches for the ladies too. I, yeah, I did that shit at my goth club. I went to this like it was bondage night at the exit on Thursday nights in Chicago, and I fucking because I did the free sample shit in the grocery stores. I, I I got like all these lunch meats and a cooler and peanut butter and jelly, and I got all these breads, and I was making sandwiches for ladies, and they ladies eat for free, but guys five dollars. Dude, you know, I, I used to buy whatever wine was on sale at whatever bar I was going. Like if I went out with coworkers, all the ladies were sitting at one table. I'd be like, all right, two bottles of whatever the hell you got on sale over to their table on my tab. Man, that wins you over everybody. Yeah, everybody loves it. It's not doesn't take much, man. Just just be. One thing about me going out is I'm not really a big drinker. I'm not like interested in drinking that much. I do drink occasionally, but like like my regular drink at these bars was a water. And I would like whenever I had the money, I would like tip them five bucks. But I was always like standing underneath a vent and always drinking water or going outside down the alleyway to smoke a little bit of weed, you know, and then coming back into the club. Uh, But anyway, um. So I, I forget when she broke her hip, but she was put in a nursing home temporarily. Um, and I don't know when my mother got power of attorney, but she, you know, my mother has power of attorney uh, with my grandmother. Yeah, I got sent to a mental hospital for wanting to be president. And yet, like out of here in Colorado, around that same time, there was that asshole. I won't say his name. But he shot up a movie theater and he was talking to his psychologist about wanting to harm people and he never got sent away. And I understand they're two different states, but again, example of the failures of the mental health care system. You know, I get sent away, but that person doesn't. What the fuck? Anyway, um, so my grandmother's out of the house, you know, um, and, you know, um, my mom is explaining to me that because she's a diabetic now, I'm going to have to give her shots, shots on her hip. And that really worries me or around her hip or butt or something. I forget, you know, uh, shots of insulin. Right. You know, and I was like, I was like, Ma, but what if like grandma has a delusion again? Like, like what the fuck? Like, like I'm kind of scared to like approach her with a needle because like, of the shit that I've been through because my family totally believes that I would shake my fist at my grandmother. They, they'll totally believe that. And this comes like, like many years ago when my, uh, my, my dad's grandparents were dying um, or my dad's parents, my, my other uh, grandparents were dying. Like my grandfather was hearing noises and I, I, I was in my early twenties at the time. And my father had given me a tape recorder to record it and so i hung out uh one night at my grandparents house at at their condo on my dad's side my my grandfather will always complain about these neighbors singing but i couldn't hear it so what i would do is i would record it you know and i'll play it back to him you know and every time i played it back to him it's like look there's no sound on there like this 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 noise is in your head i'm trying to show you you know like You know, and, and, and that was really bad too. You know, the, the shitty part of my family ended up throwing my grandmother in a nursing home for the rest of her life, um, because they care so much, but that's not what happened to my other grandma. She's just in there temporarily to, you know, she fell and broke her hip. She needs a little extra care. Um, so I, I I don't know what decisions were made for, for that, but anyway, she was still like living at the condo, but she was out for a few months. I, I remember calling up my mother and like, you know, like I was really frustrated um, one day and I like, you know, went through all these life stories of all these times that like my mother has screwed me, you know, out of things. And I'm like, if you'd like to respond to any one of these, you know, uh, please do. And I'm mentioning all these selfish things that she done and like things that she's done. Like, I forget a lot of them. Like I. I was really pissed and I just needed to get it off my chest and I left them in the form of voicemail and I did record that because I'm like, hey, you know, this could end up in the Library of Congress. So that's why I'm, oh, wait, I know the lottery is real sane, everybody, the you know, lottery, those chances are really rare, but my shit's insane. One thing that I was really upset about was 
I got these two glass door mirrors from somebody that's stole my virtual boy off me. But I got these two glass door mirrors and I had them in the garage at the townhouse and I took them from the house that we lost, you know, previously. And so, and they didn't take up that much space. It's like a couple sheets of drywall, just about, you know, like they, they had like a little border to them, like a little frame. So they stuck out a little bit. So there were like two sheets of like three quarter inch drywall essentially, you know, that's how much space they took up. But my family kept all their shit and they threw out those fucking mirrors. And I'm the one that's into dancing and magic tricks. How that greatly negatively affected my life. Just go fuck yourself, you know, like, and that's how my family was, you know, like their shit's important. It's only going to be temporary, but we're going on three years and it went on for probably a few years more until my grandmother died. And then, then my mom, like I looked it up, like my mom sells the house, like a me or the condo immediately, you know, get that sweet, sweet money, you fucking greedy ass fucking bitch. So yeah, there was like, I cleared out enough room in the garage. They had so much shit that I could just like fit my fucking car in there with like a few inches on each side. I was like super duper precise, even like with like the ceiling. Cause like I would pull in as the garage was still, the garage door was still lifting and I think one of my younger neighbors, like she was like uh, some chick and everything around my age. I think one of my younger neighbors like saw that she uh, lived above us and over. <laughs> like I, I, I come out to the garage to, 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 to my car one day and I see that her garage door is like damaged from the bottom. <laughs> you know, like, like she fucking like tried going in really quick too. And it's like, no, man, I, I fucking, I'm like, I'm like an airline pilot when I'm, when it comes to driving. Um, I'm very precise, at least when I'm used to it. I haven't driven in a while, but I used to love driving. You know, I, I, I do go like 10, maybe 15 miles over the speed limit when I'm on like the highway or some shit, but, uh, I'm, I'm relatively safe and I'm always, I just assume everybody's an idiot. No offense. I just, I assume it's like the matrix, you know, and it's like, dude, there's a possibility that everybody out here is the idiot. And I went to my aunt and uncles, my shitty aunt and uncles, my mom, my, my father's sister and her husband. It was right after I was attacked and they issued an order of protection against me, like my mom. I went there and they're like, Chris, you need help. You need help, Chris. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm coming here, you know, because I was attacked. I was violated. Like you all crawl up my ass over a hearsay that I shook my fist at somebody. I was laid upon. I had marks all over my neck and I think chest and back. And I was told that I would be murdered and that they would lie to the cops to get out of what they're doing to me. And because I'm rude to the police, because I'm rude to the police, that gives them the right to selectively do their job. No, it doesn't. No, not at all. And uh, maybe I do have bipolar. I don't know that whole... Uh, thing that happened to me, they seemed to just give me medication immediately right when I got to Cook County Jail, which was like right after being arrested. And so there was no diagnosis. So they just kind of went off of giving me shit. And it was just, it was, whoa, total mind fuck to really say the least. Um, and it like paralyzed me for a long time. Like, I don't know if other people have been in trauma, been through trauma, but you know, some shit is like, like super like paralyzing. The, the, the fucking pigs, man, they, they, they threatened a grand jury felony for recording myself being attacked. Like, cause I kept on pestering them, you know, and I kept on calling, I kept on showing up to the police station and I wanted charges pressed. What the fuck? You know, my mom and her boyfriend should have ended up in Cook County jail, just like I did. Before I move on now, they threatened me with a grand jury felony. And that's when I, I took it to the DA and I emailed the DA and I remember saying something in there like, oh, my God, I look, I dug up the email. It's like three pages long. But I, I, I mean, I know I said, like, you know, I'm definitely going to tell the world about this. Like, you people fucking me, you know, um, or, or, or something like that. You know, like you write your own chapter in my book. Uh, but I also remember saying something like, is this how is this what like you dreamt about as a kid growing up, you know, that totally fucking someone with like a hearsay bullshit charge, you know, but somehow it stuck because 30 days and then, and then I give you like proof that my family attacks me and you just totally ignore it. Like I thought you couldn't ignore that stuff, but apparently you can. They, they issued an order of protection against me after attacking me and then they started violating it. Like I had 
I had cops call my uh, mom and her boyfriend and ask. They're like, oh, are you, you signing Christopher up to all these email and phone things? Are you doing that? And he's like, no. And then the cops are like, well, there's nothing we could do. And I'm like, well, yeah, I got IP address. Why don't you look into this simply? Find out where this IP address is coming from. No? Okay, well, fuck you, pig. So, yeah, um, they advised my family to get the order of protection, but they didn't advise me at the time about affirmative defenses. You, you mean to tell me that I'm about to be attacked and I can't record that shit? Go fuck yourself. All right, there, there's probably an affirmative defense, like self-defense. There's like, I went to the law library when I was in jail for a long time. And there, there, there probably is an affirmative defense, like I should have not had that grand jury felony scare me, but it did. And that's what pigs do, man. You know, they fucking, they manipulate totally to get the results that they fucking want. You know, I had my life destroyed over fucking bullshit hearsay. Then people fucking legit attack me. And the reason why I was attacked, oh yeah, I, I wrote this down here. Well, yeah, I, le I, I left my mom like six or seven voicemails. I think I even recorded them. Yeah, well, like, I know I did record them. They're on YouTube somewhere. And I don't know if I made it private or not. I was getting attacked a lot by the Dillahunty and friends. So I had made a bunch of stuff private because there, there was this one thing. Like I recorded this one video and it was the second take, but I made the first one unlisted. But then the first, the first one that was unlisted had more views than the, the, the one that I had public. So obviously they're like sharing this one, like this, the shitty take that I did and I, I, I uploaded it anyway because I'm like, look, I'm just I'm trying to get good at doing this shit on the fly and talking and blah, blah, blah. And no, it doesn't. No, not at all. Go fuck yourselves. And that's why, like, I don't like cops and I will be the president. Like, if you want to trigger my PTSD and put me in a bad mood, you're going to be in uniform around me. Otherwise, I, I really don't, don't want you in uniform around me. They issued an order of protection against me. There was a court date for that. I was in jail at that time for not having the mental health care, mental health evaluation that I did have. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it, was, it was just like way fucked up. It was, and I don't even know if it was in the transcripts actually, because I think like my probation officer like said that to me before we went into court or my public defender, Bill Gradle, was saying that to me when I was being sent to jail that last time after being attacked. What? What the fuck? Like, like, and then the dude is lying to the cops and the cops are like, would you, you know, the, he, because the dude is harassing me on, in, on email and they have an order of protection against me. And this could be proven still, this could still be proven that they were violating the order of protection against me. Could something be legally done still? I hope so. And I would definitely pursue that. If my mom could still end up in Cook County Jail, that would put a smile on my face. And so this is approaching March now. So I did the hospital shit in February and into March. Um, because the following day, my mom and her boyfriend came over. And I heard the door unlocking. It was kind of weird because uh, no one was supposed to be coming in. And um, then they immediately started like yelling and berating me. So I like, 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 like the guy, like, you know, my mom's boyfriend, um, you know, looked really kind of violent and scared the shit out of me to where I ran to the bathroom. I ran to the bathroom and I closed the door. You know, little did they know that I had a recorder in my pocket. Um, because what I'm doing and how the recording thing started was I'm like, okay, look, I understand, you know, it's very slim chance, but the lottery is legit, right? You know, everybody, you know, that's not crazy. The lottery, I, I understand my chances are really low, but it's not 0%. Um, or at least like, you know, like I got to try at least, you know, um, and and here's one of those moments where I kind of like lost my train of thought. TJ, no, could you okay. help me? No, yeah, uh, you're you're talking about how you know if if you don't basically if you don't try, you're not going to get there. And whether it whether it be with a one in a million chance of getting a, a audio recording or running for president, uh, that oh that, yeah, you know it it's all gonna you, it, thank you that you have a zero percent chance when when you're not fully. Uh, or when well, you when you're not even willing to give it a well, shot. That's that, that's a separate point, yes. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, I was making that separate point, but 
I was recording stuff because maybe it ends up in the Library of Congress one day. Maybe this is like, like it's going to be a journey of a nobody into a somebody something. I'm having crazy thoughts like that, you know. But um, no. but that's why I have the recorder, right? I I kind of going through about my day, kind of recording stuff, and you know, it's a good thing I had it though because now it's turned into kind of over the years it's morphed into more of a self defense thing, which you will later learn is completely useless and futile. But uh, I end up turning the recorder on. It's uh, It doesn't turn on... It doesn't start recording right away. There's like a 5 or 10 second delay. So this is on my YouTube, and I know this is public. And all you got to do is search my alias name. Uh, Night Me is how you say it. It's pretty much like Bite Me, but you replace the B with an N as a Nancy. Um, and you just type in Night Me Attacked. And you should come up with a 33 minute and eight second video. I think it was actually seven seconds, but YouTube rounds up or whatever, adds an extra second sometimes. So, and this is where this recording starts. And because there was a delay, I thought, I thought there would be pounding on the door. So if I, I, a few seconds prior to the recording that you hear kick in, there is pounding on the door to the likes where I think the guy's going to bust the door down at the next, you know, the next time he pounds on it, this door is fucking coming down. So I open up the door, and that's where it starts. You know, and I tried saying something. I haven't really listened to it. I haven't, I, I, I've listened to it, like, once a long time ago. I, I remember some highlights out of it, but I don't like to listen to it, I, I, I uh, understandably, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I, I was like, what gives you the right to come in? And then the dude starts immediately yelling at me and braiding me and then I, I I remember saying something like I'm going to call the police and I don't know if you could do any audio enhancing on there um, I don't know if that's actually legible because I just have this recorder in my pocket and it's new it's new to me everything's new and so I, I at least was able to capture what I captured though because um like, and I'm not downplaying anything with Black Lives Matter. I'd support Black Lives Matter. Um, I, I, you could hear me within the first minute or two. I'm 100% sure. Uh, me trying to scream, I can't breathe. And that is the most terrifying feeling. Like when somebody gets on you and starts cutting off your air supply. And you, I mean, you could see when this shit was uploaded. This was uploaded a long time ago. And I understand people have had harder plights. People have been ended. I have survived all of my shit, you know, but I think that's what makes me a good ally is you need to have survivors like me, you know, to be able to uh, enact the actions that you want. Um, and I, going through all this shit that I've gone through so far and I'm going to, um, um, I, gives me unique experiences that makes me relatable. I could relate to so many different Americans from the homeless to the, the, the mentally ill. Um, I used to help out mentally handicapped people when I was younger uh, in school. That was fun. That was a fun experience. I needed to take some special needs class myself. Um, you know, I wasn't, I had a speech impediment when I was younger. There's certain words I actually have a hard time saying. Um, my, my son. Has it is having a hard time with certain uh, you know sounds, and he's going to speech therapy right now. So you're you're uh, you, like you're talking to someone that that understands and completely supports. Maybe one supports. day he could be president. Yeah, maybe maybe one day he could be maybe. president. Right? You know, maybe like maybe if they don't dig up thing. they don't if they don't dig up his dear old dad's podcast, because <laughs> then he'll never make it. Like, this man raised this kid. Look no, no, at this yeah, well, piece of trash. He, this is why I think I'm going to have to need to have a sensory deprivation chamber as president to deal with all the bullshit. Like I got to fucking be able to chill out, not to sound like some evil supervillain or something, but like I really like uh, Trump and his digital golf bullshit and re, you know, decorating the fucking landscape. I just want a sensory deprivation chamber and some weed. All right. Yeah, you know, dude, and there's a lot of outside noise. 
That's for fucking sure. Like coming from every direction. We live in a world where currently everyone's opinion can be like thrown out anywhere at any time. And influences are, are heavy in a lot of weird much. directions. It's like too much. Yeah. It's Trust like, me. it's, yeah, you got to take got a break. You. I've been taking breaks. Like since I did the acid a short while ago, like I've been listening to music, watching a little less news you know, actually being bored instead of finding something to fill that time. The only thing that gets that mind really working is that boredom. It's that boredom. You, they, they talk about like this prison is inescapable. And then you have, you don't entertain the prisoners and they fucking find a way to get the fuck out because that's their cure to their boredom. I was creative in jail. I made this, uh, uh, battleship board game out of, uh, notepads and, uh, pay, uh, plastic uh, lunch bags. Um, I, I get into that a little bit later. That's kind of towards the end. I'm trying to hurry this along. So I'm getting. I, I mentioned to my family, I'm I'm going to call the cops, and then they immediately start choking me out. I can't breathe, and then they they're preventing me from calling the cops, and they want a sorry. The one thing I regret out of this whole experience, the one thing I regret is I should have asked them. What do you think about me running for president? Because I, the, that would have been gold right there. So to have my family say that shit, you know, but they were, they were saying that like we got paperwork to do this to you. And another highlight I remember is that they're, they're like, we'll lie to the cops to get out of what we're doing to you. You know, they said that shit on this recording I have now on YouTube. Um, I use my mom's full name and last name or her full, full, uh, Full name and his full name and in the thumbnail image that I used on the audio recording of the video that I threw on YouTube. So they got the first one taken down. So, but I re-uploaded it. And then what I, what I creatively did was I put just the first name in one, but then I changed the audio and I enhanced it in the second one. So it's different, but then I put their last names in the second one. Um, so that's how I kind of won that battle. Um, and, um, and this dude has been harassing me online ever since. Like the my mom's boyfriend, um, signing me up to all sorts of shit. Um, immediately after these attacks, like I, my email, you have been registered on this day at this time. And a few of them, a few of those places had the IP address as well, and it was always the same IP address. Um, so what you would hear in that audio recording is my family attacking me about the first fifteen minutes. About the last 15 minutes is the fucking pigs doing nothing to fucking help me at all. They're, at least you're not going to jail, Chris. It's like, dude, I live here. They don't. You know, like they attacked me when I was going to call the cops. And you guys came storming in my bedroom to give me nightmares the rest of my life. And you're over a, a hearsay, over a hearsay. I end up in Cook County Jail over a hearsay. Someone just says some shit. And I'm in jail, and then I have marks all over my body. I have a, I, I think it's private though, but I have another recording that I took around that time that's on my YouTube as well. And I'm like marks all over my body, nothing. That's cool, you know. And I didn't really fight back that much. You like, like the dude was laying on top of me in the rapist position, you know, saying all sorts of shit. But I, I tried squirming my arms and everything because he was holding my arms down and whatnot. But uh, they eventually called the cops. You know, and, and, and yeah, so that's what you'll hear in that. All right. And, but I, I want to get past that. But one thing I did, I called the cops back later on that night to try to get them to fucking, um, again, press charges against my family that just attacked me. And they told me to get a job. This is, these are two more officers that I would have a personal vendetta against. And I would do everything in my power, just like that Harry or Harrison that slammed my head into the ground. Um, I would do everything in my power to get them fired and to get them to lose their pensions. Definitely. Um, I mean, talking about little personal vendettas, I guess, you know, I really want to focus on the American people, but these are going to be some of the side little things that, uh, that I might do. Um, because how dare you, how dare you fucking, you know, I'm the victim of a crime. You're not going to do your jobs, but you're going to tell me to get a job. You know, like, go fuck yourself. You fucking piece of shit. You know, um, and this is like, like ever since the cops had arrested me back then, I was going around town flicking them off, like flicking them off. Like, 
anytime they saw me in the car and I saw them, they're, they're driving towards me, I'm driving towards them, I'd roll my window down and stick my finger out and flick them off. Because that's my constitutional right. You know, go fuck yourselves. You know, I ain't going to get no violence. I was actually trying to do a GoFundMe that I never got a s- sent for any of my GoFundMes. But uh, I was going to send them some Pepto-Bismol because, you know, it's it's not really a gut feeling. It's just gas. You know, their their little gut feeling, you know, about me. But I kind of understand. I had a more playful mindset back then. But I understand how cynical and evil uh, it actually could have been. Like, uh, And a lot of this stuff, I suspect. I, I don't have proof. And everything, but look, if you want to bust up the corrupt, sometimes the corrupt will come for you. And sometimes they'll come for you before you even get started. Like I was just I was just like brainstorming ideas. I wasn't even taking it seriously at first until I got punched on the face. And then everybody's like, No, you can't do it. And I'm like, Well, well, well wait a second. And it's it's totally fucked up how it all started. But this is where it is now, and I am taking it seriously. But if America wants me to that just wither and die. Because I see ISIS got more support than I ever got. Like, I get less than support. I was Back then, I was just like, hey, who wants to start talking and helping me train? And I know I'm not perfect today, but help mold and shape me into the person tomorrow. You know, and I'm willing to go through this hell because it's not going to be a pleasant experience. It's not going to be all sunshines and rainbows. It is going to be very hard. But I will say, with very few exceptions, that the president... The job of being president is so much easier than what all these, what you deal through, what you go through at work, what all these other citizens go through at work. I will say that it is much easier. So when people say that I can't handle a normal job or whatever, I would say, yeah, because it's way harder. Give me the presidency shit because that shit going to be a lot easier than what you're doing right now. And I will fight uh, with every ounce of my being, any creative way that I can you know, to, to make a better world for you. Yeah. Uh, and, and at least your loved ones, our generation TJ might be a little too over the hill to be unfucked, but I'll yeah, do what I can. Yeah, I know. You know we're, it takes we're, time for we're fucked in every way. Shit. We are fucked so bad. I don't want them to be raised in a fucking world where little Susie, yeah, working two jobs. It's totally normal. Yeah. Maybe how about a third job? That's totally American. That is fucked up. They should have one job and be able to live a decent life and not in squalor and, you know, to be totally impoverished. There's been the, 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 the second taxi driving job. I worked every waking moment and I can never put a roof over my head. And it was so odd because I was doing way more hours. So I thought I would wait and make more. And my lease was $50 cheaper than the first taxi driving job. So I'm like, okay, it's $50 a week cheaper. You know, so that's 200 a month I'm saving right there. I'm definitely going to fuck. And I'm going to do more hours. I'm going to do more than 12 hour days. It's just going to fuck like every waking moment, you know, and still, you know, and, and that's kind of what I did, um, after what happened here. So my family attacks me. I'm, I, I think it was a Wednesday or something, um, or a Thursday. It's Friday. I was having some weird phone calls from the government, um, but I was out of the house at the time, roaming around. I ran into one of my the people that were following me uh, at this gas station. Um, and again, we could get into the people that are following me some other time or or whatever. But one interesting thing will uh, that I will say is like like sometimes spy shit. It's not all fucking like Jason Bourne and fucking like you know you know you got the tactical monocle and everything and you're fucking checking all the exits and counting you know me- memorizing license plates and shit sometimes it's like hey bob do you want to you know go down to the local gas station and uh, get some coffee and check this guy out and they're like yeah sure you know it's not as you know that that's the kind of reality that i think uh that is um but uh one of the my suspected stalkers said something randomly to me that day he's like he said something like, things get worse. And I had no idea what that, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, someone says that shit, you know. So Saturday rolls around. And I'm, I'm out of the house most of the day Friday, so Saturday rolls around. I'm playing video games, I think, um, and the police come. And they come to serve me an order of protection. Or order of protection that my mom had put my grandmother's name on. Like, you know, and, and there's like a thing called elderly abuse, right? where people are manipulating old people and these things are crimes. You know, these are not things that my grandmother wanted to do to me, 
but they were done to me, you know, and my mom being the manipulative bitch that she is, um, made me homeless again. Now, the thing, I, I, I skipped over a very important thing, but back when, before I got sent to jail in December for not opting out of that blood test, after saving my grandmother's life. So, like, in my head, you know, I'm like, I'm like doing the right shit, you know, but then I get punished for it anyway. It's like, look, yeah, I opted out of the blood test, but that victim and everything that you think is a victim, I, like, saved her life. Does that count for anything? No, send me to jail. I told my mom when we were visiting my grandmother at the hospital, eventually when she came around and wasn't dealing with empty boxes, um, I told her, I'm like, Mom, I'll kill myself if you make me homeless again. And I said this to her back in December of uh, 2012. So when she made me homeless intentionally with an order of protection, because growing up around my mom, and I think this is why I have a hard time with emotions, is my mom's one of those manipulative bitches. And she loves to be the victim. You know, having her son commit suicide would mean that she could call all sorts of friends and gossip and you know, feel sorry for me, you know, and, and, and talk about how sad and sorry you should feel for her that her son took her life. You know, so this is why there's some things I'm a very forgiving person, but there are some things that I cannot forgive. And my mom doing that, like, look, my dad was an awesome dude. He was uh, the only parent that ever helped me out with anything. And um, my mom, not so much. Um, anyway, that's supposed to be a, order, a temporary order of protection. So I'm homeless again. I got a court date coming up for that order of protection. I also have a, it's like one of the last court dates for this um, thing that I'm going through with the with the, um, uh, one year court supervision. You know, the hears, the untrue hearsay that I shook my fist at my grandmother. I, I'm not trusting this mental health evaluation. So I, I go check out John Madden Hospital in outside of Chicago somewhere. Um, and it was really fucked up because I ended up going to the wrong place. They have this Loyola University thing next to that hospital, which I ended up going to. And they gave me a thousand dollar bill for driving me in the ambulance, like literally like a hundred feet to the John Madden mental place. Like it was such a scam. It's like what, like I should have, uh, yeah, I was trying to go there. Why did you guys just charge me a thousand dollars? Like anyway, it was, so I, I go there, you know, and I'm like, look, I, I need to have a second opinion on this mental health evaluation. But as soon as I mention, like, you know, like, like bipolar, they're like, oh, here, here's some medications. You know, and it's like, I, I'm kind of bad at taking medications. Even till this day, I'm, I'm, I'm have a hard time, you know, always remember to take my medications. And it's even worse when it's something that's making you feel like shit and something that you know is wrong. Like, okay, maybe I am a little bit loopy. Maybe I have these problems, but I don't think it's something severe that needs to be treated necessarily, okay? You know, and, um, but, I, and I was getting a goofy side effect. I couldn't stop looking up for whatever reason. I, I was just, I, I couldn't stop looking up. And then they gave me something to counter that. But then that made me constipated. So then they gave me a laxative to help with that. You know, and it was just like one problem after another. And, you know, uh, I'm talking to some of the social, uh, social workers there that, um, I'm like, look, look, there's, there, you know, like something bad's going to happen. I really, you know, like I need to have a mental health evaluation. I need you guys to do this. And they're like, no, we're just going to treat the problem. So I start the process of checking myself out, which takes a few days. Like you got to sign some paperwork, wait a few days, get yourself out. Um, and so I do that, but during this time I'm talking to my probation officer, I got a court date coming up soon and I'm going to miss it cause I'm going to be stuck in the hospital. So my court and my probation officer never tells me anything. They're just, you know, they, they never say, make sure you get this or, or anything like that. They're not, you know, to me, they're not on top of it. You know, they're not warning me about anything, which they should have warned me about this thing. I, I will get into shortly. Um, 
So, oh, there was one time, like, I was so frustrated going through all this shit. I called my probation officer up once, and I pretended like I butt-dialed. But, like, I had the Team America World Police theme song going in the background, like, really loud. Because I was just, like, so frustrated. You know, like, I was just getting, like, railroaded by the system and everything. And, um, yeah, she she told me, the, like, the next visit. She's like, don't do that again. But anyway. Uh, so my family attacks me. I check myself into the mental hospital. I start the process of checking myself out. I miss this court date. My probation officer tells me the court has issued a warrant for my arrest. So now I have a warrant for my arrest. My car is in the parking garage at this place. I got to drive over to Bridgeview Courthouse, which isn't that far from John Madden uh, Mental Hospital. So I just needed to like, travel up this one road mainly. I think it was Harlem Avenue. And then like a little side thing right at the end. Um, so it was very stressful going up to the courthouse, but I go there and of course they arrest me. Like, you know, I see the probation officer, then the police come to take you down to the lower jail parts of, you know, the facility where you're arrested. I sent after, after I got attacked, I sent the DA, the audio of me getting attacked by my family because the cops weren't doing anything. So I emailed the DA you know, the DA's office. And I'm like, well, you know, those people, you know, that are loosely, you know, involved in this one case. Well, they just attacked me and the police aren't doing anything. Could you do something about this? And if you guys don't, and I, I and I consider, I, I, I do threats, I do threats, but there's legit legal threats you can make. Like, like I was saying how I would tell the world, you know, your part in this story that I have to tell. Like, if you fuck me, I will tell. You know, that was my threat. And I think that is an acceptable, legit threat. You know, there's exceptions and everything. And so these are the threats that I would make. You know, I'm going to tell the world about you, you know. And this DA was Kelly Peterson, her name. Um, and I forget the judge's name. Sherry, Sharon, Cheryl. I got the transcripts. I threw it on my blog. You sh someone should be able to find that, um, the judge's name. But um, And then my lawyer was Bill Gradle, my, the public defender. Um, so yeah, they, they, during that last court date, the DA said to the judge just to rile her up. They didn't take any quotes or anything from my email. They're just like, well, Chris said threatening emails or sent threatening emails. Like, okay, well, what quote, what, you know, what, you know, like, and I'm just like during this time period, I'm like a deer caught in headlights. I can't think straight. You know, I'm just like in court saying, like, y yes, yes, n no, you know, I can't get my thoughts together. Um, and it, it was it was a really horrible experience. But the, the kicker, TJ, the kicker here is they said that I didn't get the mental health evaluation that I had gotten. So therefore, they're sending me to jail a third time right after my family attacked me. Right after, and then I was trying to get that mental health evaluation that last time I went to the mental hospital, but they're like, no, no, you need to have a judge order that. We're just going to treat your symptoms here. So I tried, like, and then there was no warning beforehand. Like, my probation officer, Beth Porch, never told me, you know, um, leading up to that last court date, like, make sure you get that mental health evaluation turned in. You know, there was none of that. And I think it was because I switched probation officers and there was a clerical error made on their part, you know, but I ended up paying for it. And after those two weeks in jail, they did uh, time served. Jesus. But during those two weeks, it gets worse. Like during those two weeks. Oh, I mean, it gets worse. Like I thought this was the worst of it. And then the worst is yet to come. Um during those two weeks, man, um, I had that court date for that temporary order of protection. The jail, and it was the same courtroom that I was already having this original case at, the, the untrue hearsay that I shook my fist at my grandmother, the one they keep sending me to jail over. And, and, and so it's at the same, it's the same judge, the same courtroom. They, the jail never took me there. The jail never took me there. How, how the fuck? I would have defended myself. I would have been like, yeah, my family fucking attacked me. Could you look up my YouTube really quick? You know, it, it, like none of that. I had no chance to defend myself. So therefore, an automatic two-year order of protection went into place. You know, and then from there, I I made sure to get permission to get my property. I loaded it in my car. 
I had a friend help me out with uh, some money, a couple hundred to be exact, to help get a background check because I was shooting for a taxi driving job. And unfortunately, you know, you got to have a little bit of money in order to pay for certain things. So you get all qualified. And I started driving a taxi for a while, you know, again. And this is where I worked every waking moment. And I'm sure I ran into some customers where they were kind of nervous um, driving with me. Um, I, I had this one regular that stopped being my regular because one time I had picked them up and I, and I, and I, 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 I was kind of speeding and everything. And he was a little, he was a little nervous about that. And I was just, I was kind of having maybe a mental episode. Like I'm all mentally fucked up and, and, and I'm overworked. I'm overtired all the time and I'm just not thinking clearly. And, you know, and there, most of my customers didn't have a bad time, but I can't say that for everyone. There was probably, there was definitely some times where I was overworked. I was overly tired. I wasn't thinking, you know, um, I wasn't thinking clearly and, um, I should have maybe drove a little slower with some, you know, maybe talked a little less with others, you know? Um, but anyway, it is what it is. I got, eventually I, I, like even all the hours that I worked, I just, I, I eventually got fired because I slipped behind the lease a few times. And, but thankfully I did sign up for social security and I did get lawyers and I would occasionally, I, I met with them like four times over the course of like a year and a few months and actually four days after being fired. And, um, I, uh, I got approved for social security and I had the most money I ever had in my whole life. I did not hear you. I don't know if you have your uh, thing muted. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I, I was making sure I wasn't making any any background noise. But yeah, that's that's awesome. That you, to get through that is kind of a challenge. Yeah, that was it, it. Was really rough. I mean, there's lots of li little side stories and everything. I'm skipping past, but I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to finish this for you, man. Okay, because sure. we're we're getting into. I mean, it's going to go much faster now. Um, that was all of that stuff though was really fucked up. And I was getting that IP address, which I think is still on my blog. Um, I, I did a, I, I tried looking the location of it, and it was like a mile away from their house. And they still harassed me, and I could still prove it. The dude was sending me my social security number, my bank account number, all this shit through email, trying to fuck with me. He's like, knock, knock, Neo, saying stupid shit, you know, and all sorts of shit. And it's just like, it's like stuff that I did when I was 12 years old on the internet. But this guy is like, you know, in his late sixties, probably at this time, he's probably seven in his seventies now. Um, I don't really care too much about it. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, the police still didn't do anything. So it's like, man, I'm going to end up dead. And then maybe you guys are going to fucking do something. You know, I got like $9,000 on top of, you know, buying a ton of weed. I spent like $500 on weed before I moved out of Illinois because I wanted to make sure I had some. Uh, and I, I quickly decided where I wanted to go. It was either going to be the Portland, Oregon area or Colorado. And I ended up in Colorado. I did one straight drive. I actually wish I hadn't had my life destroyed because I lost all this property. I had a dash camera on top of uh, my dash or I had a, I had a camera on my, on top of my dashboard and I did a time lapse and it was really cool, but I had all these external hard drives and all this shit that I ended up losing a little bit later on. Now I, um, you know, so I spent a few thousand before I left Illinois and then I left Illinois, moved to Colorado, found an apartment, started buying stuff for it. And then I was uh, befriending some homeless people trying to help them out. I have been thinking that, you know, I want to walk the walk, you know, and talk the talk. So like, I am looking for some financial support if people want to help out, but in order for me to get it, I want to first help out some of these homeless people that I know. And, uh, I know, I know at least four of them. Um, I don't know if this one couple is together or not, but four or five, uh, and maybe rent or if I could get a mortgage on the house, um, like a five or six bedroom or something like that. I've seen cheap houses in the Midwest, not too many in Colorado. Um, but I've seen like a cheap, like four bedroom house for like $50,000 in like Southern Illinois and Western New York and shit like that. 
Um, I do want to help these people out. You know, one, uh, two of them are living in a vehicle. Two of them are, or two or three of them are living in a vehicle, and two of them are don't have a vehicle. Um, and I just would like to help them out. And I don't know. I need to talk about this. I don't have anyone to talk with and bounce ideas off of, and it just makes me worse off in general. I feel like what's happening to my grandmother is like has been happening to me. Um, you know, the lack of stimulation for so long and the deterioration and whatnot. So I just need to get more active and stay more active and just be better, you know, than I was uh, tomorrow than I am today, you know, and uh, that's all you can do. Obviously, I welcome any scrutiny. Um, <laughs> if any journalist wants to look into this story, I tell you, it's a fucking doozy. Um, I could only prove so much because I only documented so much, but to think how unbelievable this whole thing was, had I not like just captured my family, just attacking me, just how unbelievable everything was, um, is just, wow. If I didn't get that recording, that is so like, to me in my head, that was like a big piece of the puzzle. There's other pieces too, but that is such a significant piece right there that, like, I, I captured my family attacking me, saying this fucked up shit, and the cop's not doing anything for me. And then it got way f more fucked up right after that. Um, I also want to mention that um, some of these things could be actionable. Um, I don't know if the statute of limitations are up or if they could be told, um, which essentially is like being paused. Um, you know, so if someone can help me out legally, because I, I pretty much escaped Illinois because because like I would like end up dead and then maybe law enforcement would do something about it. And I'm like, nah, I'm just out of here. Fuck it. Yeah. Like, I mean, if, if someone is a lawyer, you help me out with some of this shit, I'll, I'll go half on you, you know? Um, I mean, pay, pay the finders and you know, the, the person that helped edit this to make this even possible uh, to begin with T-Rex, T-Rex, T-Rex. <laughs> T-Rex. So once they are paid, half of that. Yeah, I need to do this more because I got the uh, constant uh, chronic dry mouth. I need to take smaller sips because I could totally down this right now. And I reuse bottles. Like, look at the label. It's like all faded and shit. I reuse, reuse them for a while and then I'll get a new one. It's a lot better than what most people do. And I've seen, like I said, way early on i've seen past videos of myself and i i, I kind of giggle at the like i was fucking around in a lot of that shit like i i had the megaphone and i like did it in my ear and shit and i would scream and freak out like that was just entertainment like i was just fucking around like uh there was another one that i, I it might have been in the j beam rub i don't i don't remember but uh i was like blindfolded or something and I'm swinging this knife around and I'm like, Wayne Lapierre, where are you? You know, like, uh, anyway, I just fucking around having a f fucking good time. Just like I think like walking up like behind Joe Biden and sniffing his hair, you know, shit. I just thought like, maybe I'll try sniffing his ass, you know, like, just to make him uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, that is not funny. Uh, <laughs>